Hello, good morning, welcome to Sewing Quarter. My name's Amy Burrows. I hope you're all cozy at home on your Saturday morning, ready for our show this morning. Today, I'm joined by Joe Carter and Lucy Brennan, and we've got some great projects lined up for you. We've got the Creative Grids Rooters, we've got the um, Bear in a Bag, but we've got a twist on that today in the Colour Me fabric, which is really, really cool. We've got a Tilda Giraffe, we've got Kaif, we've got lots of exciting things. Let's have a look at the menu of exactly what's coming up this morning. So at eight o'clock is Scrapology with Lucy. So that's those creative grids rulers. Nine o'clock is the Colour My Bear. So you can customise the bear with the Michael Miller fabric. At 10 o'clock is the Sunshine and Shade quilt. Oh, that one is absolutely gorgeous. That's a slightly more advanced quilt this morning. It looks, it's stunning. We we're all, all looking at that in the office this morning. And 11 o'clock is Joe's Giraffe Masterclass. So we've got a Tilda Giraffe from the Tilda Studio book. So also for today, we've got an exclusive offer if you're a brand new customer, if you've never bought anything from Sewing Quarter before, today's the day to get involved. Maybe it's time to treat yourself. If you spend over £10 on your first order with us, for today only until midnight tonight, we've got an exclusive offer where we're going to send you a Fat Quarter bundle. I don't know if I've got one here to show you, but we will get one. It's an eight-piece Fat Quarter bundle. And that's only until midnight tonight. So you're only going to get that today only. And here it is. All of these from us to you as a little present to cheer up your weekend. So lots of reds and greens and charcoals in there, but eight fat quarters, 100% cotton, great to add to your stash. And that's for new customers today. So also, we love to hear from you. Please get in touch. Yesterday, we had loads of pictures sent in, everyone getting in the festive spirit. We even had one, um, one customer who put up the Christmas tree and was in their Christmas, Christmas PJs, which we love. So please do send in your pictures. Maybe you've already made the uh, bear in a bag. We'd love to see those. Or if you've got some um, CAFE projects that you've done, we'd like to see those too. So you can get in touch via the website if you go to studio at, at sewingquarter.com. If you go to the uh, watch icon at the top of the page there, just under that live feed of today's show on the right hand side, what's producer Paul going to say today? Say hello. So you can ask us a question if you've got any questions for Lucy or Joe. You can pop those in that little bubble there. He's had a donut this morning. I bought in some donuts because it's Saturday and producer Paul had one at six o'clock this morning. So he's re that's why we've got lots of exclamation marks. He's high on sugar. Underneath that is a shopping list of everything you can buy on today's show. So those are yesterday's projects from and products from our festive show. But that will all be updated with our Tilda and our K facet this morning. And you can also email us. So if you want to send a slightly longer email or you want to attach a picture, you can do that by emailing the studio, studio at sewingquarter.com. That goes straight upstairs to producer Paul, who we might have to give another donut to later on this morning if he's feeling a bit tired. And then we can show those pictures on the show today. But let's crack on with what we've got this morning. So Lucy's joining me in this hour. We're looking at the Creative Grids rulers for Scrapology, but we've got some really lovely, lovely fabric bundles. And these are two metre bundles, so you get four half metres. Um, we'll have a look at some of these different patterns that we've got and different designs we've got this morning. They're teamed with solids, they're teamed with spot-ons, and they're teamed with linear texture fabrics as well. So I'm going to start with the uh, Golden Climber, which is from Anna Maria Horner. This fabric is absolutely gorgeous. It's a golden yellow. It's Sort of reminds me of a um, sort of a custody yellow almost there. And then you've got bright pinks and oranges in that. So you get half a metre of this one. This is the social climb of fabric from Anna Maria Horner. Then underneath you can see we've got half a metre of the pink spot on. Really lovely bright bold colours. Then you've got a linear look fabric, so that's just got that cross-hatching detail there. This has almost got a, a slight sheen to it. A lovely golden colour. This one's called Sunshine. And then you've got a solid pink on the bottom there. This is your fuchsia. So as a collection, golds and pinks there. CMGC 66, that one's 1995. Now, we've also got another a twist on the Anna Maria Horner in a different colourway, so I'll show you that one next. This is more of an icy collection. This one's called Ice Climber. So, and um, we've got, again, those flowers. Let me open this up so you can sort of see more of the pattern. Really lovely if you want to fussy cut sections of these flowers or take um, sort of smaller sections of it. Lovely for quilting. This is a really lovely quality fabric as well. So you have half a metre of that. Then you've got half a metre of a linear look fabric again. This is on a duck egg blue. 
Again, it's got that sort of sheen to it. Then you've got half a metre of your spot on yellow. A really soft baby yellow there. I don't know if you can see those spots scratching the light, but they are there. And finally, you've got a solid as well in that collection. And this is your duck egg blue. So the ice climber fabric there, again, you've got blues and yellows, two blues, a yellow, and that floral from Anna Maria Horner. Two metres, 19.95. Now, let's have a look at, first of all, we've got some pinks and navies and blues in this collection. So I'll start by showing you the patterned fabric. Got some lovely leaf detail here. Two different, two different shapes of leaf. Unbelievable, as producer Paul loves that. I'm going to say that that's producer Paul's favourite pun. Anything remotely plant related. So this is your, <laughs> tell him to leaf it out. That's what they're saying now. So this is our fuchsia botanica leaf. So that's the uh, designer print. They're going to just keep going with the leaf puns now. Now we've got, I can't believe I said that line. Oh dear. Then we've got this um, cornflower blue, again in that crosshatch, so with that sort of linear texture look to it, but this is 100% cotton. Let me move that one because that's a different bundle. Then you've also got a solid cream and a solid navy in that bundle there. So that's a slightly more affordable bundle. Then we've also got that, we've got this one here is another Botanica one. This is in a um, sort of a royal blue and the detail in this is in a black which is quite unusual actually on a darker fabric you can see there you've got sort of little birds and flowers and then that's been teamed with again a linear look fabric let me just fold that one up this is a slightly darker teal then you've got a solid and a slightly lighter blue there as well, just in that family of blues, but teamed with the designer print from that Botanica range. Then our next one, we're just whizzing through these this morning so we can, so we can crack on with Lucy and those rulers. Then we've also got, this is a lovely bundle actually, you've got some nice lilacs coming through here. I really like the, um, the colours of the flowers in this. So you've got some, again, some lovely sort of raspberry pinks and some deeper purples as well. That's the forest fruit blue botanica leaf. And then paired with that, as I said, we've got a nice soft lilac. That's the solid. Then we've got a spot on, on a blue, sort of a duck egg blue again. And then we've got a deeper purple there as well. Just picking out, if I just bring this one so you can see, picking out some of those colors in the forest fruits there. 16.95 and finally we've got a different colourway in that so it's the forest fruits again but on a white background and um, it's the same colour flowers so again you've got those lovely sort of raspberry colours and deep um, wine colours in your grapes you can just see here so that's that top one and then paired with that is a dusty dusty purple spot on a deep purple solid and your green is that grass green it is grass green ERGC 22 16.95. So six different options there, two from Anna Maria Horner, then you've got those botanical ones and you've got your forest fruits as well. Okay, we did mention Lucy's here, she's got a new top on today, let's go and see Lucy and her new top, here she is. <laughs> Lovely new so top! <laughs> Looks very nice. Thank you. Happy with it? I'm very Good happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to start the day off right. I've got to acknowledge the new top. Well, we've had donuts already. Exactly. So, so we've start the day well. So we're doing these um, Scrapology rulers today from Creative Grids. Yes, yeah. Um, these are the they're Scrap Crazy. Yes. Um, and we've got two different ones. Um, and they make up different shapes and they form a block. So um, the one I'm using first is a six inch okay. um, block. But these are a lot of fun to play about with. And there's actually loads that you can do with them so it's not just i just show that um, formation the so first see. block so it's sort of different formations that you could use with with different pieces of fabric yes. if you wanted to yeah you get lots of different shapes so those are the four um rulers that you get there are actually five shapes that you can cut with the templates let's just open that one. 
if you can sort of see some of the different sort of formations you can put together. And now you can see, so you can make hexagons, um, this shape. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? A, a hexagon? No, that's not a hexagon. That's, that is six sides again. It's sort of a twist on a... Yeah, it's like an hexagon. elongated, yeah. slightly elongated one. And then this one with the, with the triangles and the side shapes there. So you can make a smaller triangle with it as well. Um, and then the, that main block there is the one that I'm going to be doing today. But it, it's, it's really interesting in the, the way that you put it together and it gives a really beautiful look and it, and it looks like more work than the it really it is, is. Which, which we all like. Yeah, What's love wrong that. With that? And this is to create a six inch square. So then yes. obviously you can, you can do lots of those and create, obviously once you've got all of your yeah. blocks So you can put them, um, put them together and you get that sort of effect. It's quite cool. Yeah, which is really nice. It's a bit nice. sort of. Yeah, and it's great that they provide you with this because you can colour it in. And if you see in the centre here, that bit there is slightly like a pinwheel and you've got these bigger shapes going around. So depending on your fabric placement, you know, you oh, could yeah, photocopy yeah. this and colour it in. Yeah, I was just going to say photocopy when you first get it. And create all different kinds of effects, which is really cool. Because then you could play with different colours. If you only if you colour straight onto your only copy. Yeah. And then even you could add sashing into that. Break you it know, up and break it up and, yeah. and, and get different looks that way as well or have it as a centre and do different borders around each one or there's, there's lots of different ways that you can use it. And the other good thing about this is it's really good in terms of you don't waste any fabric. They really no. tell you how to utilise your fabric to get yes. the most out of it so you're not going to end up with sort of more scraps, really. You yeah, know, you're no, going to end up using every part. Yeah. And that's, is that to do with the layout of how you use the rulers? Yeah, it's how they, you know, they really do think of everything and... Um, the way that you cut um, the fabric means that you're making the most of it, so there's very, very little waste. So that's Let's great. see the rulers then. So they're actually... Yep. They're not what you would traditionally... So it's not, you know, it's not a straight... For some people in their head, you just think of a ruler, don't you, as a as a 30 centimetre strip of a rectangle, but these are yeah. all fit together. They're, temp they're templates, really, um, for, for your different shapes. So, and then you can see on the um, triangle one there, you've you've actually got two triangles in one so you've got the smaller e triangle and then the larger the full template is the a triangle um, with all of the creative grids rulers as well they have this really unique sort of non-slip on the back don't they don't shift anywhere once you yeah. put them on the fabric they, they're not going to no, slip and they're slide really and... really easy to use and um the grip is fantastic it's like no, no other it's just it's, that's it's their, the best. their unique yeah. formula for... So yeah. we always say, well, John says, doesn't he, Rachel Ruder, she designs yes. a lot of the rulers. This one's actually from Karen. So we can go calculating, Karen, what else is remotely yeah. mathematical, beginning with a, with a K? I don't know, we'll, <laughs> I'll have to think about that. Send so, in some suggestions <laughs> send in for some a nickname. Suggestions, what we could do for, what we could call <laughs> Karen Montgomery, who's the designer of this ruler. So how do we get started with this one? OK, then? so um, in the instructions, you've got, um, you know, it tells you how to do it, and the the... You, to make the most of your fabric, you want to cut six-inch strips. Okay. So you're starting off with a six-inch strip, which I've already cut. I've cut the selvage off, because obviously we don't want that. Um, and of course you went for Anne-Marie Horner. In the thing, of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. And I've actually laid this up, so I've got um, the um, Social Climber one on the top, and I've got the linear print um, on the bottom there, so that just so that I can cut more shapes at okay, once. OK, great. And I've already cut some there, you can see, and I layered that up too, so I was cutting... Um, through two layers at once and if you are comfortable with cutting fabric layer as much as you go for it feel like just... you can confidently cut yeah so um, in the instructions it gives you um, the layout now there are different ways that you can actually cut this out and um, in the layout there it's really making the most of the fabric so we're starting off and we're cutting an A and a B and then sometimes you turn the fabric over and you use the template again and you get like a reverse of the shape. Oh yeah, okay. So it depends what block you're making as to how you would cut it out. So if I was if I just wanted these shapes, I would just lay them all on in that know, shape the, that they're the end right up way being. round yeah. so that so that I'm just getting those shapes. But if I want to do some as a mirror image, so this is another thing that you can do, you can make mirror images of the block. So if you imagine putting that one next to one that was a mirror image, yes, you're so sort of getting like a shape. mountain yeah, shape. Yeah, in the middle, you get start to build a pyramid, wouldn't you, there? And then you yeah. could... So if you were to do that... So the layout that's on the back is just them as they are. Yeah. But then if you wanted to do a reverse 
um, block Cut as up, well. Oh, good. Yeah, so you so you get even more. So it's really there's just so much that you can do with them, which I love because it, you that's get more exciting. Out of it, don't you? You're not just getting one block from a room. You're getting yeah, lots of different. No. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to do it as it's um, laid out, so that we're really. So you do the need to decide before you start. Pieces. Really, if you decide which block you're going to do, so you can then get the most out of your fabric. Yeah, so that you, you can get the most out of it. I mean, you can just go ahead and cut them all and then see what you end up with and start just piecing like them together. Yeah. yeah, it is like a jigsaw. And that's kind of the fun of it is that, you, you know, you're mixing it up. And once I've cut them out, we can have a play with the, with the um, placement of the fabric as well yeah. and decide where we want that to go. So when you're cutting out, you do need to be quite... Well, obviously, you need to be careful, as always. Um, but, you, you know, there might be some areas you're not quite following the ruler and things like that. So you just want to be mindful. But I lay the pieces on and position them so I can get the most cuts. And then, you know, I might move that one out of the way to, to cut this one and cut then there, cut yeah. that one. So you just want to be careful. And you can move your fabric around or just position yourself so you're cutting away from yourself. But because it's got that grip on, it's quite easy to move the, the fabric, move without... the pieces, yeah. Also, would you be fussy about where you're placing that on the fabric in terms of if you, if you have got a design like this one where you want to get a floral, would you sort of fussy cut in terms of your placement of some yeah, of the sections? I mean, you can. I think because I'm mixing it up, it might be quite nice to just have some of that sort of mustardy golden colour just with a splash in of areas. Or... Yeah, I mean, I'm not too bothered about it now. And then because it is scrap crazy and it's going to be a real mixture, it'd be quite nice to have some areas be floral and some not. Yeah, That's not what so I love busy about ones. this print. Yeah, so you, so you get that different look from it. So then in the instructions, you flip the fabric to get your next B section. So this is going to make a reverse B, if you like, so it'll make sense once I've cut it out. See, doing this yourself would be so... To, to fit something together like that yes. jigsaw, to get it to all slot, because it literally does fall into place. You know when, where you have one of those wooden jigsaws where they've got the little things on the top and you drop them into the into like the tray where yeah. the jigsaw sits? It's going to fit and lock into place exactly like that, yes. isn't it? Rather than if you did it yourself, it might sort of be a bit a bit skew with or it might not quite match yeah. up. Yeah, and it just... it's. It's just nice to have it there. You don't really have to think about no. it. You're just following just the instructions. Trimming and using and it's set. very clear. Mm. You know, there are some instructions where you're sort of going, oh, is it this way, is it that way? You're not quite sure, but it's they're geniuses at those. writing the instructions. <laughs> it's so clear. And also, with all the Creative Grids readers, they have a, um, a QR scanner on the front of them. So it's on the instructions, but it's also on the actual uh, ruler itself, if I just show you here. So you can scan this, and there's, a, there's links to videos on YouTube, how to use the rulers and tutorials for all of those. So if you do get stuck and maybe you don't like reading instructions or... And it also has the name of the, you know, of the template set on, it. on the template, which... You know, for somebody like me, whose sewing space is perhaps slightly haphazard, <laughs> it's quite nice to be able to have it. You know, no, I don't have to remember what it was astray, called. You know, you're not necessarily going to go. Oh, yeah. I remember the CRMT6 Whatever. ruler. Yeah, yeah you, you just that's forgotten not which one it is, and you're not going to get them mixed up if you've got lots of templates. Yeah, which I do. Um, but so the so you can see the B there. It's the mirror the image. Page. Yeah. So by cutting it from the reverse of the fabric, we've got that mirror mirror image of the bee. So this in and of itself would create... I mean, I wouldn't put those... You know, I might do it like that. But you can see we're beginning to create another block there. A different, completely different shape and a twist on it, really. Yes. Yeah. So then I'm just going to flip this It is back. kind of a little bit like almost graphic design or it's got more of a design element yeah. to it, hasn't it, with slotting things together and... It does. So then I'm taking C and D... So little scrap though and waste. You've just you've got tiny bits yeah, there of just tiny, mm. tiny bits. So that's gonna be my C and D there. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna do C first. You just don't want to be going too far because you're really making the most of the fabric. I'm not gonna cut all the no. way up. Just as far as you need to. Just really. as far as you need to, yes. And then I can spin that around. Not lose my fabric. <laughs> there we go. What about if you, you couldn't do this with scissors, could you? Um, if you were going to use scissors, you would, I would draw around and the then trim because it. every time you moved it, it's going to, um, you know, shift. But I think, 
it sort of defeats the time the point, saving the, yeah, the whole point is that you just it, really. run up against that template yeah. and it's... And they are designed, you know, they're designed to be used with a cutting mat and um, rotary a cutter. rotary cutter as well. So then it's going to be D. Oh, I'd love playing with this and just having it. I would. Th I think I'd cut out loads of stuff, and yes. then I would just. And then I would play. I would yes. just go. Oh, that works with that, or you could, you know, mix and match colours, or you might have even if you keep three the same and have one random one, or just. And like that, like you said there, that's from that fabric, but that's really yeah. is actually is just the plain yellow, yeah. really. I really think this print is like having two. It's like having two, two fabrics prints. in one. Yeah, I think because it's you, brilliant. Because you get some really plain sections and some very yeah. bright, busy floors. But it's going to coordinate. Perfectly. Perfectly, yeah, which we love. So um, you can keep on going. You get you get more shapes from um, you know if you fold it in half, and you can get more mirrored shapes and, and you layer can them do, up. And you can do, do more, but yeah, let's get sewing. So, so that's the golden climber bundle that we're working with at the moment. You've got the linear sort of golden sunshine yellow. You've got the Anna Maria Horn Horner um, social climber. Then you've got the spot on pink and you've also got the solid fuchsia in that one as well. And that's what Lucy's working with. CMGC 66. That one's 1995. So two, four, six, eight. So I've cut 10 shapes. Yep. That's the wastage. So those Nothing. tiny little bits there are the scraps. <laughs> and then I've got these two slightly bigger... <laughs> I mean, it's still really small um, pieces, but you know that's still Just you. That. Those are still usable. Yeah. You know, you could piece those if you are into tiny. If piecing. you're inclined. That, yeah. That if you wanted to, um, but you know, Fabulous. it really does. When I say it makes the most of the of fabric, everything. yeah. And if you have got a designer fabric as well, you know, and, and you've kept even little offcuts of that, you could utilise those with, you know, these smaller sections of the rulers. You could go, oh, I've probably got enough to get a D piece out of that if it matches yep. up with the other fabric patterns that you've got, perhaps. Absolutely. And they even say that. They say, oh, you'll have enough on this bit for it to, for cut, a, an to extra cut a D or an A. Or an extra yeah. D. yeah. So they really do cover... Um, everything in the instructions. Which so even I love. actually, if you laid out, so you know you had was it a six inch strip that you started with? Yes. And you might have cut everything you needed, but say there was enough room to get an A and a B, and then you just put those in your stash yep. the next time, and then you can you know introduce those next time you do the block. Exactly. And there are different ways that these pieces will fit together. So you can you can get really creative and play about with them. So now we can just lay them out. So I'm going to do it as it's. Um, you know, as it's designed. laid out in there. So, so this, this one? Yes. Yeah. So you can just mix them up. And I've just cut, you know, I've got four blocks there without, you know, in just no time at all. It's so quick to do. And all different. Four, you've got four different layouts. Four different and ones. And layouts, sort of, um, patterns. Yeah, and you really begin to see how, um, the, you know, how the blocks will come together and how it will look. I love these colours. I think they work really well together. As you go on, together. they do. They're beautiful. So it's nice having the four different ones because we've got four uh, different fabrics. pieces. Yeah. But then that gives you um, an idea of the kind of effect. And that depending we're where you laid those out, you know, you might get sections where you've got two. To, you could start to create even other patterns from those. You know, if you had yes. all of those four meeting in the middle, or you reversed one, like you said. Yeah, absolutely. And you could. I mean, you could do them all the same if you wanted to. You could just cut Which all of A. But you could cut all the A pieces from one fabric, all the B from another. You don't have to go completely random. You could keep them. You know, we could do. That block, that and just block have it as a uniform quilt, everything yeah. all the same with that. Yeah, so so you really are going to get a lot of variety, and each quilt you would make would look completely different depending on how you how you arrange the fabrics. And also, you you don't have to use four fabrics. You could no. use you know you could use two out of the bundle, and then you might team it with something else, or you could yeah. just you know and mix and match that. It's it's really cool. You just have the like you say, you could create lots of different things from it yeah even though it's only four rulers or four templates you know lots of different formations and colorways and and i like the idea that you can reverse them and change it up a bit as well if you want to yes yeah and i've chosen this one because these are sort of my colors and yeah. i love this one <laughs> but you know if you if you went with like the purple one it would give a you know Very this is quite feel. bright and you know but that would be sort of a more neutral sweeter you know kind of a kind of a look so yeah, that's the fun of it for me. So I'm going to start piecing these together. And the other thing that I love about these templates is it makes piecing really easy. Um, for some people, triangles are a little bit tricky because you've got those um, extra points and you don't, when you're sewing a triangle to another shape, 
you don't line up the point with the edge of the fabric. You have to leave a little bit overlapping. So you have that little dog like So you've got dogger, your, yeah. yeah, so you have the dog here and you have your seam allowance. But Creative Grids have thought about that. So if I take these two pieces, I'm going to put these two pieces together. I was going to ask you because together. they square off the corners. They square don't them they? off. Yeah. So you can see as I was cutting out the templates, there were just little sections that were at an angle, and that's so that it makes the piecing really easy. So if I start off piecing these two pieces together, right sides together, you can see there's no point for me to line up because we've trimmed it off. So I know that that's where my quarter inch seam is going to be, and it's going to run exactly from there. Rather so, than having to worry about, yeah, you know, overlapping something it. off, or so yeah. you, not only can you use it as a guide for your seam, but also you get that flush sort of corners, yeah. don't you? So there's no trimming at the end. You, you you've get done a all six your, inch when block. you do yeah. your cutting. You've done all your cutting. A lot of times, if you're making half square triangles or things like that, at the end you've got to trim Square them all or just... I'll show you that later on because <laughs> I've got to do a lot of a lot of trimming in the next in the next hour that I'm on yeah that, that'll yeah. be what I mean um but you know that can get a little bit monotonous when you've got a lot of blocks to trim at, at the end but this one is just all your cutting so you and can then do that in one go you together. can do like I said do all your cutting and yes. then literally just get on with assembling and, and putting it together yeah. and so you know, if you were following that diagram, you know how many blocks that you need to make. But again, you can make any size quilt. You can make a cushion. You can, you can do whatever you want using with, it with with the template. Using a bag. Using a bag. Yeah, or it's a six-inch block. So just times that by however big you want your quilt to be, and you know that that's how many you know and how many rows, and that's how many blocks you need to make. To Even less waste as well. Even those tiny bits have all been thought about, haven't they? It's just yeah. less. It's, it's great. Yeah. So um, so I'll start. Sew away. Sewing them. Is there an order to how you would piece this? Okay, so the um, it's just in two sections. So you're piecing these uh, these two pieces together first, or these two. It doesn't really matter. And these two pieces need together. So it's two sections. Yeah. And then you're going to put those together. Together. Like that. So you're going to sort of do the half and half, and then and then put yeah. them together. So I'll just do one, and then I'll chain piece the others and okay. put them together just to see how it looks because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look at the fabric options we've got this morning. So this one at the moment that you've seen is that golden um, social climber. That's from Anna Maria Horner, 1995. You get two metres of fabric there, half a metre of all of those, your pink, your pink spot on, your golden sunshine and your floral. We've also got another Anna Maria Horner option, which is in your icy blue. So that's the ice social climber. And then you've also got your spot on baby yellow, duck egg blue, and that soft blue as well, again 1995, VDGC44. We've got some other options as well. We've got the lovely leaf one there with your navy, your cornflower blue crosshatch and your ivory solid. That one there is the fuchsia botanica leaf. That one's 1695, WFGC44, again two metres of fabric, so you've got four half metre cuts. Then next up, we've got that forest fruit. This is the forest fruit. Is it called on ivory or white? We'll soon see. Or maybe it's neither and I'm, I'm making it up. Forest fruits, berry botanica leaf. It wasn't even an ivory or a white. It was just that, simply that. But that's paired with a deep purple there, your grass green and your dusty purple spot on. ERGC22. That one's the most popular at the moment. For those colour combinations. We've also got the um, Forest Fruits in another colourway, so it's on a different colour background. It's a slightly bolder collection, but again teamed with purples. I don't know if we've got a picture of that one. Here it is, it's just coming. So again, you've got your spot on uh, duck egg blue. Oh no, the, um, the actual Botanica Forest Fruits there is on a blue. I don't know if it looks very blue on your screens at home, but it is a, um, a soft blue background. And then you've got your deep purple and your lilac. PIGC88. Now, if you like blue, there's also another one for you there with a deeper blue, more teals in this collection. You've got that bird one with the black print on the teal background. You've got your cross hatch and you've got two solids there. OVGC88, that's the blue Botanica birds bundle. Have we got one more? Or is that it? That's it, there's six bundles. So a few different options for those there. Um, you can either add them to your basket on the website or if you want to give the call centre a ring, the number's on your screen, 0800 112 4433. So, Lucy's sewing away. 
Do you want to swap back? Does that so feel weird? It does feel a bit <laughs> weird, actually. I didn't really enjoy it's that. It's strange, isn't it? We just get used to standing in the same place. I know, but I'd be like looking over there like, at the wall. <laughs> just talk to the embroidery heaps on the wall. <laughs> yeah. So that's a finished block there. So you can see how it's kind of got this mountain effect. I really like it. If you did that if in like you, green and white. Up, yeah, the, on the other side, Someone yeah. that skis or something. <laughs> that would be really fun. We could do like a, a blue run. We could do get down. like a whole mountain scene. Um, so that's the finished block there. And then, um, yeah, you can just piece it together. And you can turn these around as well. So, you know, if I... So I might not want it that then... those go together, you know. Yeah. So, and I might not want those to go <laughs> together. So you just keep... You just can keep twisting them around to get... Um, you can see how we put these of four. Effects. Yeah. Move this and I've just realised the time as well, so I don't think I'm going to get to sew this one. Do you want to do the other one then? Let's just lay these yeah, out. Well, and then I'll move on to the That's other all one. That's all right. But you can see how that would start to start yeah. to come together. Create a form. So it's really, it is a really scrappy kind of look, which I love. But then you could, like I say, make it more ordered and create different. It's up to you um, how uniform you go, isn't it? it? Really? Yeah. And having, you know, if you have that same shape in the middle, you get a different look again. Then, so like you can get that sort of a pinwheel on a smaller oh, yeah. um, level, which I think is really that's really pretty. Having that little little pattern, that little section that meets there. In the middle. So just and look the. It's sort of got, no, it's not a flying geese effect, but like the triangles are sort of spinning as well. So these points here are working their way around, which I think looks nice as well. What's, so what really, what's lovely is that you, it's as scrappy as you want it to be or not. You know, you yes. can keep, if you want to keep it more uniform and ordered, then you can. But if you want to go and use lots of different fabrics, yeah. even, you, could, you could have loads of different colours, yeah. couldn't you? Well, or... and depending on what sizes you have left over from other projects as well, you could use... The template, you know, and so I've got a piece that I can cut a temp cut that from the template and waste less fabric. Yeah. And then I might have a smaller piece, I can cut one of those. And you could build them up and Almost just have do it as you go. You could be doing lots of other projects. Exactly. And just be and just sort of start to build a collection of different templates. Yeah, sizes. And this would work as um a leader and ender project as well, which is when you're sewing something else. You're always um people normally do it with squares, but you could be putting you know, creating these sections as a leader and ender. So each time you're sewing another project, you're sewing part of this project and you'd have a quilt while you're I've working on other things. Phrase. Yeah, it's fantastic. A leader and ender project. Leader and ender. So that's a that's a fun idea as well. But I'll just um reiterate that the the thing the joy for me is that it's not just about this one shape, that you can make all these different shapes and rather than just buying a triangle ruler so that you can make triangles and hexagons and things if you've got this you're able you to make lots just of different a. designs not just this one and it, you're not just limited to these there's there's actually a lot more that you that you can do with it it's just having a play Figure with the shapes and see so it that, that's c or d i don't know if we could really quickly just show that one is that this that would be this one is it this way what am I doing? If you wanted to yeah. create that, we've got four of those, haven't we? Yeah. So you could make. You would do. I mean, I think you can do that like that. So you could just. So that would be like a lovely border if you just yeah. had um, those. I don't have enough because I've sewn one. Sewn but you know, one. it'd be like yeah, you could start to slot those just together. Just keep going, and that would create a different effect. So it's not just about that one quilt. That there's lots of different shapes that you can use to put things together, and you know the. Put, start putting the triangles together to make a hexagon. It's just really, it's, you just know, it's a lot of fun. fun. So this is your six inch creative grids ruler. We've got an eight inch one that we're going to show you next. But if you like the look of that, PLGQ28. So you, again, you've got that um, non-slip um, base that's really sort of exclusive to creative grids that doesn't move anywhere once you put it on the fabric, it doesn't shift. You've got really thorough instructions and grid layouts in the actual pack. And you've got your four different templates that you can actually use to really maximise your fabric and make sure you've got much less wastage. So then we've got an eight-inch one as well. I'm going to separate Let's those keep so these don't together. Get we don't want to miss them much. <laughs> Although it is written on there, so I'd be okay. okay. Um, so this one makes an, an eight-inch block, and again, you've got with this one you've got three templates, but it's one, four. five different shapes, four different shapes. That's A and B. Yeah, four different shapes with that one. Okay. Um, which again is great. And so with this one, um, you see oh, the yeah, it's really look at nice. This one. It's a really cool formation. I really like that. And again, you can create, you know, 
that depending upon your fabric placement, you get different looks. I love these sort of lines going through like a zigzag. It's almost like they're, they're sort of sitting slightly off centre from each mm. other as they go down. So how does this one work? Then obviously it's a similar technique with your cutting yeah, and everything. Yeah, so it's the same principle. So you've got, um, in your instructions, it shows you how to place the templates to be able to cut all of the shapes out. Um, you can, in fact, with... I think with both of these, you can cut from a 10-inch... Or perhaps it's just this one. So you can, you can cut um, from a 10-inch square. So if you've got any um, layer cakes... Yes. <laughs> ..or charm squares that are 10 inches, um, you can um, cut from those 10-inch squares as well. Um, but, again, you can cut really simply from strips. So, again, this is 6-inch strips that we're um, cutting Using. from. So if you've made some of those and you had some leftover six-inch yeah, strips, both. you, you could, could then do, make, mix, yeah. Yeah, make some of these, this one as well. Um, so I've done some six-inch strips already. And then it shows you how to um, lay out uh, your templates to make the most um, the of the fabric. So again, that you're not getting a lot of waste. So I'm going to just... show you this picture here so you can see. Just, it shows you exactly where to lay out the rulers onto the fabric, like Lucy said, so you can really maximise and make sure you're not getting lots of waste. So th this is where you're going to put your... You know, you're going to reverse your C there to make sure that you've really used all of the fabric, laying that one vertically, so it's, you know, really maximising the six-inch strip. Do you want to look at that so you can...? Yeah, so I might actually, for this one, um, make them the, the set, you know... All do, in one? Yeah, so do all of my... Um, A's in one and do it like that, just for something different. But if you were to lay them up, you're just following the diagram. So you do a D, a C. Reverse the C. Turn the C around. You, you don't lay them all out and then cut them. You do one at a time. So yeah. you do the D. You've got to be safe. You can't cut in between. No. The, the You're not going to try and squidge no, your rotary don't cutter try and through squidge the gap. rotary cutter through that, but it's just a guide. So you cut that one, then you'd cut that one, and then you flip it. Got that one, and then your B. So it's got quite clearly says um, on the template there, cutting line for template B. So your A and B is yeah, incorporated. So you can into see one that, template. and then you just line that up there. Cut that one, and then I think this one you do on the side. But once you've cut it, you'd be able to do a mirror image one on top the other way if you wanted to. Yeah. So yeah, you can. Or you could cut it from the reverse. So, there's, so, you know, it isn't just about having a play with these rulers and seeing, you, you know, what you, what you want to do. And having that guide there on the back is great. Because I think so as well, you, you get a ruler and you so naturally just think, oh, I just, I just pop that on the fabric. But if you actually follow the guide, it yeah. really is holding your hand through, making sure that you can, you, you know, really utilise the amount of fabric that you have. Absolutely. And you'll find different ways, you know, if I just want to cut A's from this, I can still make the most of the you know, of the fabric, so I'm getting the least waste. Yeah. So, because you're cutting from that strip, you know that they're all going to, you know, to fit on. So, because I think some, some templates, you do end up wasting a lot of fabric, and it's just sort of a shame, but it's nice that it's just these tiny bit, you know... These tiny, tiny bits, and we're able to, to like get those. Barely anything. Yeah. This is one of the blue botanica fabric bundle. So you've got the uh, blue botanica print there on that sort of dark blue background. Then you've got two blue solids, and you've also got a linear texture there on a slightly darker uh, tealy blue. OVGC88. And there's no measuring. That's the other thing. It's so not mathematical. You're creating it's like layout, this, but it's not. Yeah, you're creating this block, but you're not having to uh, stop and and make sure everything's lined up and, and you know, so long as your fabric's it's lined like maths, up. It's not really. In... No, so it's so it's really quick compared to following a pattern and having to measure all of your all of all your pieces. And and it would be tr you know, to get that shape. To cut that out with a ruler would be Well, also, not only to get really that shape, difficult. but to get the, the dog ears that Lucy was talking about, where they sort of have squared off the edges. I don't know if you can see here. But rather than ending up with any little bits that you're going to have to trim off at the end or to square the block off when you're finished, it's already been done for you, so all of your cutting is done at this, at this begin, in this beginning section. And there's another one here, look. You just cut once. You don't, you know, you yep. don't cut twice. Nope. You just cut once. That's it, you're just cutting once. So I've layered up my two fabrics with this one. And there's no measuring. One. 
It's no not measuring, measuring twice and cut one. It's literally just, no. just cut. <laughs> and just the other thing to, to be aware of is with these rulers, they have got that grip, which is fantastic, but you must press them down. Mm, you can't just place it on and expect that not to, you know, but once you've pressed it, then it's it wobbling shift. the table. <laughs> then it's not going to move. So it is important that you, you lay it on and you just give it a quick press and so that it stays in place. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit of pressure. And not a lot, at, you know, they're very, very simple to work with. So that's... So I've got two cut out there. OK. And then I'm going to flip that over. We've got about ten minutes, so we're all good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Where does this time I go? Know. See, this is me messing about, getting... Trying to be clever with my with shapes, the, with yeah. The... But that's the thing, it's so, it's so lovely to be able to play and, and think about the layout and where you want things to go. I'm going to get that lovely bird one back and do the bees from that. And look at that, look at the weight, look at that. There's nothing. <laughs> look, this, is the, this is the waist. It's nothing. Can we do anything with these? What do you reckon? You keep, <laughs> them for, keep them for stuffing. Perhaps keep keep, them, keep them, for, them for stuffing. Keep them for stuffing. Yeah. There's our waist. Nothing Stuff some pin anything. cushions with them, you know. You might be waiting What's a while to stuff a pin cushion with those. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine it would be like you could put one pin in. Yeah, that wouldn't be so great. So now, because I've, I've not followed the template, I am going to make a little bit more waste, but that's my fault because I wasn't... Lucy! I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Even then, it's not, you know, it's not a massive amount. So one of those, and then... So now I'm cutting the bee, so I'm just using... I'm not going from the edge of the template, I'm going from the line that's on the template to make the And bee. then which one are we going to make? That's the, well, that's the question. Which shape are we going to no. go for? I'm going to do that main one, but it's going to look this different one. because of where I'm placing the fabric. Let me show you. So just depending what colourways you use and where you... Like Lucy said, where you put the different fabrics, this is the main block that we're going to start to form here with these pieces that Lucy's been cutting. Figure five. OK. So I'm going to follow that now. Come on, then. And then just have a go. So, D... It's good for your brain as well. It's really... It, honestly, yes. it's like, with shapes and putting yes. things together, I really think that is... That it's, it is. It's, well, they it say, really don't they? It is really good for your brain. A B. Because they say, I don't they, a lot of little boys do a lot more of this sort of thing with things like Lego and stuff like that, and that girls don't often do as many of these sorts of formations yeah. of shapes and things. Yeah. But it is really good for you. So there, so you can see I've used it, I'm because I oh, love that. So that I'm, I'm going to use that um, that fabric twice. And it's really nice. Oh, it sort of looks like I've fussy cut it, but I didn't. No, it just <laughs> happened that way. It just happened that way. Might lose a bit of its head, but that's OK. <laughs> um, but I've, I'm using that twice in the block because, that, you know, that would be my feature fabric then. And it's just nice having that play of... Blues the together, I think, is lovely. Yeah. So how does this fit together? Because obviously at the moment there's a tiny gap. Yeah, so there. again, this is a jigsaw. And don't, when you cut your pieces out, they're not supposed to look like they're going to fit together because obviously you've got your seam allowances in between. And so that's all worked out for you. You don't have to think about it. So it's just looking at which sections are going to, which sections are going to join up correctly. So it will be that one to that one and then that one. And then these two, and then so slide always, those together. So always, as with the other one, you do sort of a half and half, and you're splitting yeah. that on the diagonal And it's line. got it step by step in the instructions for you anyway, yeah. so you don't actually have to work it out. It is, it is there in the instructions here in for pictures. you. Yeah. So you sort of go do those two, then you would do these two separate sections, and then you assemble to create that final block. A jigsaw. It really is a jigsaw. There's it no other like way to jigsaw. explain it. It's yeah. Quarter of an inch yeah. on all of them. So I can do these ones at the same time. Oh, so you can start sort of chain piecing as well once you've yeah. cut everything out. Yeah, and I would recommend if you, have a, if you have a section like this, that you start from the edge with the straight lines. So rather than... So I'm starting at that corner, not that piece that has the little angle. There we go. So it's easier, you're going to get less... It, it's less likely that your machine's going to chew up the fabric oh, if you so start from a straight edge. you start on that yeah. flat edge. Yeah. And I do like to do a little back stitch just to secure all the pieces. And then I'm going to give those a little press. OK. Oh, if I can cut my... 
Right, of course it's not, but there we go. <laughs> and the other lovely thing about these, which is You look really delighted about I know, something. I'm I so delighted. Smile. There's no seams to match up. It's like the most thrilling thing. You don't <laughs> need to worry about, put, there's no points to match up in it whatsoever. So if you're a beginner, this is totally perfect. If you've been sewing for a long time, you just want a break. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to think seams. about it. Yeah, it's like a wonderful cheat that you get a really pretty effect that looks like, you know, complicated, but you've not, you're not... Um, you haven't had a headache of... Yeah, th uh, these don't match up. No. So, you know, if you're like me and you don't really love pinning, so you, know, nice you can get Saturday away with it. Saturday morning project. Yes. So just... yes. Yeah, just really relaxing. The cuttings out so is so easy because the templates are so well designed and then the piecing is really quite, you know, is really quite simple. Who's sewing this morning on their Saturday morning? Send us a picture of what you're making. You can send them to studio at sewingcourse.com. Please get involved. We love to see what you're up to. And I, I think maybe we, we can. We do, we Saturday. love it. We do. Like, yesterday yeah. we were like, all these pictures have all been sent in. We love them. Yeah. Even it's, if it's a work in progress, you don't have oh, to yeah, show us finished, finished things. Just anything you're working anything on. It's really all. nice Please send to in, see. Please send in your snaps. So there we go. So you can start to see that coming together. And I'm pressing my seams to the side. Um, I'm not even, it doesn't even, it doesn't really matter where you've got a seam um, already. Yeah. It's easier to press it that way than press it that way. Because you, you're, you're making more bulk. So, yeah, so just, it's just sort of quite naturally wants to go that way anyway. But it is easier to press that, um, that way. And then that one, I've just pressed it. You can do, you know, either, either, either way, it doesn't, really doesn't matter. And then we're just going to put those together. So again... Oh, so now it does start to fit, you know, where before I was yes. like, oh, there's a bit of an odd gap. But yeah. now it does And even in. there where you think, oh, there's a piece, of it, but it isn't because no. it will, it's, goes in the seam allowance. So again, you've got those dog ears, um, you know, cut off when you, when you cut out your templates. So then when you come to piece that together, you can just line that up exactly. Okay. And you've got nothing to worry about um, overhang. <laughs> you support just said they look a bit rough because they know their dog ears. Honestly, the puns oh. that I have going on in my ear. I'm amazed you do your job at <laughs> all with that. <laughs> I just was like, I felt myself smiling to myself. I was like, I'm going to need to say what he's just said in my ear because yeah. it's quite funny. He's making himself laugh. He's chuckling to himself upstairs. He's having a lovely time. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, I will just say, this, when you come to sew these sections on the diagonal, you are working with the bias of the fabric. So if you want to, I mean, you can always pin all of the pieces, but if there was a place where you sort of needed to pin more than other, it would just be on that bias. Okay, so that join of cutting, the two. Because... When, you, when you're joining the two together, yes, you might want to um, do that. And then again, we can just press that. Just to stop it, could, like sort of cont any contortion of... Yeah, because, and because it, it naturally sort of pulls... Um, oh, I like this one. It naturally pulls away, but... Yeah, so you can see the effect that that's... That's lovely. Yeah, it's really, really lovely. I actually like it top and tail with those two fabrics. I and do. You, because it's a square, obviously you could do it if you wanted them on the sides. Or, but I really like it that way. And again, you're going to get that different effect. So if we have a look at the diagram, you can see that if you start to put these together, you're getting that kind of cross effect with those straight bits um, there. But if you use two different fabrics for those sections, or you could use the same ones there and there. And and have, I mean, in it's the just a whole, yeah, and then there's, really there's like a pinwheel effect going on with with this sort of triangle section you've created without having to, you know, fussily cut different different shapes. But I think, you know, it is lovely to just work on a project that's that's simple to make, but, but really looks effective. so effective. Just yeah. a stock warning on this eight inch one. If everybody that has it in their basket checks out, we would have sold out of that one. So N I C Q. N yeah, NICQ94 is the um, item number for the 8-inch square. That's 22.95. so please do check out your baskets on that one because that's nearly sold out. There is also the 6-inch one that Lucy's been looking at this morning, which creates blocks like this. So it's a slightly smaller block, you know, if you wanted to... If you had smaller pieces of fabric, even, that you wanted to use... Yes. Um, then there's the option to do that with the smaller block. Or you could mix and match them. You could do central sections with the 8-inch, and then you could... Yeah frame it couldn't you with the six inch blocks yeah so you could put little borders on that one to make, to make it up it to eight. an eight inch and mix those up together that's a good idea yeah there's loads that you can do with them and and with this one as well 
you know, don't be afraid to use these these templates on their own. They're not rulers. So, you know, if you just wanted rectangles, well, there you go. Just You've got a rectangle it. ruler. The C, you can mirror so you're creating like a half square rectangle. Yeah. So you could do that. Um, and then that one you can just have some fun Mix with. <laughs> you can just do a dance with this one, just play it around. <laughs> you're back in an hour, aren't you, Lucy? I am. And you're yes. doing the all oh, the I'm cake very quilt. excited. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a good one. It's slightly more advanced, so any advanced quilts or intermediate quilters. Um, just the construction is, is a, a little bit more tricky, but I'm going to talk you through it. So it, it is suitable for anybody. Lovely. OK, great. Well, we'll see you in an hour. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so let's have a look at these um, fabric bundles. So there are six different fabric bundles this morning. I'll start with that one we've been working with with Lucy, which has been really popular. This is from Anna Maria Horner. This is the a golden social climber. So you've got that floral there on that golden yellow. Like Lucy said, you kind of feel like you get two fabrics with this because some of the plainer sections, if you're using it with the templates, you would just get that golden yellow and a tiny splash of pink some of them you've got you'd get a much busier floral really gorgeous and that's paired with a spot on pink your sunshine yellow on that cross hat with that cross hatch linear look and a magenta pink as well all of these are hundred percent cotton so you get two meters of fabric in total half a metre of each of those cuts, CMGC 66. That's the one you've been seeing all morning with Lucy. That's the one that we were using with the, uh, the six inch Creative Grids ruler, which is also almost sold out. So please do check out your baskets on that. I'll give the call centre a ring that number's on your screen. Now, the most popular one is the forest fruits. Is it in the white or the blue? Let's see. The whites, I'll show you that one then. So the most popular one has been this forest fruit. I, I've never seen this before today. I don't think it, I just, I don't, I'm not sure how often it's been on, but I've, I've never seen it. But you've got lovely sort of grapes and berries here in some deep wine colours, also in your uh, bright pinks and yellows. Let me move that one out of the way. Then you've also got a spot on dusty purple, just picking out some of those tones from the forest fruits. You've got a deep purple solid and a grass green solid as well there. ERGC22, two metres of fabric again. That's the most popular bundle this morning. You will need to check out your baskets on that. Please do check them out because that's, that's limited stock. Now, oh, we've only got one bundle left of that, so you'll have to be speedy if you like that one. So there's also another forest fruits bundle. I'm going to show you that one next in case you like that one, but perhaps you, um, you might miss out on that colourway and perhaps you like it in the blue. I actually really like the blue background. It's sort of, um, it puts a bit of a spin on it. You can see here it's again those same forest fruits, but on that soft blue. That one's teamed with a solid purple again, a nice deep royal purple. A duck egg blue spot on. These are lovely for quilting. They're all 100% cotton. And then you've got that soft lilac solid as well there. So just that rich uniform colour, just saturated with that solid colour. PIGC 88. Two metres for the Forest Fruits Blue Botanica Leaf. Oh, now as a mix and match, if you have already got that white one, these would look lovely together as well, just picking out if you pop them... I'll just pop those side by side. You can, because obviously the forest fruits are the same, just in different colourways. But picking out the different spot ons, they do work really well together. Let's have a look at the birds. This is producer Paul's favourite. This is the one that Lucy was using with the uh, eight inch creative grids. I'll open that one up. You've got that sort of um, the dark black print on this blue background here with birds and twigs and lovely sort of leaves and flowers. Lots of foliage in this one. Half a metre of this. And then that again has been teamed with some solid blues. Let's move that onto the side. Two solid blues and your cross hatching on a darker teal here. If this is in your basket, it's okay at the moment, but it does look like this has been a really popular one this morning as well. So you will need to check it out if it's on that shopping list under the live feed of today's show. 
OVGC88. The 8-inch Creative Grids ruler has now sold out, so if you did manage to get that one, well done. Thank you for being up bright and early. I'm glad you're... Uh, and if you remember, sorry, if you're a first-time customer, you'll get one of these exclusive uh, bundles for today, only till midnight. So if you've spent over £10, we'll send you a fat quarter bundle. Now, also, we've got this um, pink leaf one here, and this has been paired with some blues. You've got a cornflower blue, you've got a navy and a cream solid. There it is. You can just see that crosshatch one there. Your navy and your cream. Oh, <laughs> didn't fold back. There's your cream. WFGC44. And the other one that we've not looked at is our other Anna Maria Horner. So this is in an icy colourway. So rather than those golden yellows, this is more of your lovely sort of soft blues. And you've got soft yellows in here and an aqua too. So the Anna Maria Horner is on that aqua background. You've got nice lime greens here, actually, sort of picked out in that, um, in that floral. So again, two metres in total, half a metre of the Anna Maria Horner who we had in a couple of weeks ago. Lucy absolutely loves working with her fabrics, lovely and was sort of bowled over to meet her. And then we've got the um, linear look fabric there. We've got a spot on yellow. That's a soft yellow and a blue solid. So, don't go anywhere. After the break, Joe Carter is here. We've got Bear in the Bag back, but this time we've got it in the Michael Miller Colour Me fabric. So if you've not seen it before, you can make a bear and colour it in and customise it however you like. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in three minutes. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing, work, we create and love. So today I'm going to be showing you how to sew a satin stitch. This is basically a line of straight stitches covering an area, let's say a petal, um, and they'll be parallel and adjacent to each other giving you a nice satin finish. So I'm using embroidery thread and I do have a, a knot in the end just for the purpose of this demonstration. So I'm going to be taking my needle from the back to the front of my work and I'm just going to sew a simple square. So I've done my first line of stitching. And you can see that I'm coming in very close, but not through the same hole that I did before. So my next line of stitching will be parallel to the one I've just created. So I'm going to keep doing that. There we have our setting stitch. Tune in on the 31st of August when textile artist Tilly Rose joins us back in the studio. At 8am, Tilly will be sharing all of her tips and experience to help you learn freehand embroidery, as well as showing us the Elna 680EX sewing machine. With a vast amount of features and 170 different stitches, this must-have machine will certainly meet all of your sewing needs. Then at 10am, join us for a masterclass with Tilly. She'll show us more freehand embroidery techniques using features on the Elna 680EX to create some gorgeous autumnal panels. The perfect project for those cosy nights in. So join Tilly on the 31st of August for her masterclass on freehand embroidery at 8am and 10am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Welcome back. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. I hope you're nice and snuggly at home with a cup of tea watching us this morning. I'm joined by Joe Carter in this hour. I've got another little cuddly friend. We've got the, the bear in a bag is back today. 
really gorgeous and cute. And this one is one that you can colour in. It looks lovely in the black and white. Let's just have a look at him, look. There he is, peeping out of his little bag. He's got somewhere to go if you're taking him on the go. But he's lovely in the monochrome. He looks really sort of... He's really interesting in that print, you know, really vi visually interesting. And you can see the little bag that he goes in. But also, the amazing thing about the Michael Miller fabrics... It feels mean to put him in there. The other thing, um, the lovely thing about the Michael Miller fabrics is that you can colour them in. So these fabrics are designed to have colour applied to them. You can use textile markers to put them, to, to apply colour straight onto the fabric. Lovely for children to do as a project if they want to customise or personalise their bear. So I'll show you these pens to start with. These always sell out whenever we have them on the show. They're really, really popular. You can use them to colour the fabric. You can also use them if you want to uh, write your names into, into things. So perhaps if you've got school uniform or anything like that to mark up, you can use it to write straight in. It sets in the fabric and it doesn't wash out. So you can use that there. And, um, you know, as it's, you can see here, that 40 degree wash. The lovely thing about this pack is you're getting 20 colours in there. So you've got a whole spectrum of colour. And I'm just going to open them so you can see, where do I open this on the back, is that these are a dual nib felt tip as well. So you've got, um, you've got a, a thicker nib at one end, so for slightly bigger sections if you're colouring in. And then you've also got, I'll just hold it there so you can see, a finer nib on that other end. So for the little small intricate bits, if you want to get into for, for some finer details, you've got the option to do that there with that pen. I love colouring. It's so relaxing and there's, it, it's sort of become really trendy to do colouring again, hasn't it? And there's all those colouring in books for, for mindfulness and for being nice and nice and zen and present in the moment. And it's all about colouring. But this is a, a twist on that. You can colour straight onto these fabrics. So I'll pop those there so you can see them. We've got um, four fabric bundles this morning for making this bear in the bag that you can colour in. First of all, we've got an option if you wanted to make three bears. So this, um, we've got three fabrics in a bundle um, where you've got three, different, three of the different fabrics all put together. But I'll start by showing you some of the different ones you can buy individually. So we've got Under the Sea. This is our fish frenzy. So this is enough to make one bear. You get half a metre of this fabric. It's the black background with the uh, white fish on it there, so you can see where you would colour those in. You also get all of your stuffing. You get a huge bag of stuffing. I'll show you that now, actually. You get your instructions and you get your thread as well to do the, um, the detail on the bear. This is the huge bag of stuffing you get. So you've got plenty to make future bears as well or future stuffed toys if you want to. We've got a giraffe coming up later in the show, so you'd have lots of stuffing. I am going to just show you these instructions as well because these are really, really thorough instructions. They're lovely. This is Joe's design. So Joe, who we've got with us today, designed this bear. But we've got step-by-step -step photography of the whole process. All of the cutting out. You've got what you need. You've got all of your fabric. It's actually sort of a, 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 like a little book of everything. You've got all the assembly really thoroughly photographed and also with diagrams. You've also got all of your templates there. There's Joe. <laughs> but everything you need to make these lovely little bears. So these instructions come with every kit this morning. The first one I showed you was your fish under the sea bear. Now, we've also got the fish on a lighter background. So if you, if you do think you're going to colour it in, I think the white fabric particularly lends itself to this. So it's the fish under the sea pattern on a white fabric. What's lovely, I'll show you some of this colouring later, is that you can just colour small sections, you can just colour um, sort of different edges or highlight different areas. We've also got the next option is a fantasy. So I'll show you first of all on the dark. This is a retro floral actually. You've got really big bold floral prints. Lots of circles, lots of nice curves in the petals of the flowers. You can just see my eyes peeping over that fabric. It looks a bit creepy, doesn't it? OAGC44. So that's the um, floral fantasy bear. Again, you've got your um, skein of thread, you've got your instructions, you've got your stuffing. And as with the Under the Sea, that's available in a whiter option, a white colourway too. So I'll show you that one. Do, 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 do. Half a metre of your white. But again, it works beautifully as a monochrome print. You could just leave it like that. You don't have to, have to colour it in. But lovely to have the option to do that if you want to. 
And you could make the bear for a child, then give it to them with the pens, and if they want to, if they want to colour it in, they can. You know, they don't have to be involved necessarily in the making of it. Now, this is also something we've never done before. We've bundled the Michael Miller fabrics this morning. So there's three colour, uh, colour me fabrics from that collection. So you get a metre and a half of fabric in total here, half a metre of your fish on the dark background, half a metre of the fish who are upside down <laughs> on the white background, and half a metre of the floral on the black background. So you've got enough here to make three bears. Obviously, you've got that big bag of stuffing, so you've got plenty of stuffing for all three bears, bundled with the, um, with the markers and with the thread and the instructions. So for 49 95 you've got three bears there. I'm going to take the bear with me. Let's go over and meet Joe and get on with our bear. Oh, very limited stock on that one. On everything, actually, so please do check out your baskets. Joe, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, I love our little colouring in bear. I haven't done this with you before. No, I love it in the colour, the colouring fabric. It looks lovely, just black and white, doesn't it? It does. You know, just, I think it's quite a sophisticated little bear like that, if you wanted to leave him and you didn't want to colour it in. And then also this little bag. So is this, if people want to sort of, to give it to someone as a gift or to just take it, you know, if it becomes a little bear that you, like a little diddy or a little thing yeah. that you take with you. So you could pop some pens in the bag with the bear and give it as a gift to oh, somebody. Oh, yeah, that's a nice in. idea. You could keep a couple of pens for yourself and then yes. you could give a couple of pens <laughs> in the bag. Then you've got the option to do some of your, some of your own. But the actual making of this bear, you, you obviously did all the instructions for this that I we've did. got here. And how do you find this one, sort of as, as, a, sort of as a skill level? It's definitely an intermediate. The, the issue with this bear is its size. Its size makes it more difficult. Um, I've done things in the pattern to try and make it a bit sort of limit the fiddle factor, you know, yeah. limit how, you know, the trickiness. So there are seams. So the arm is all one piece instead of two separate pieces, same with the leg and the body, the front and the back body is all one, whereas usually I'd have a separate Sections back and... body and a separate front body, just to try and eliminate some of the seams and some of the chunk as well. So this is, an, this is as you say, it's nice for an intermediate and then you could perhaps give it to a child to colour in if they wanted to. Yeah. And once you've put that colour on, it locks into place, doesn't it? It doesn't, it does. it doesn't go anywhere. So you can, you can iron it and then it's... Um, Oh, if you have to iron it, though, you would need to really colour it before you make the bear. You would, but then... Do you not think? You could give it a little press over with an iron when it was already done. You wouldn't want the iron too hot or, you know, just carefully to try and seal it. But then with bears, often they don't go in the wash anyway. No. And so... so it would be, yeah, that would be OK. And the bag as well, obviously, you could colour in. You could have a colourful bag and then you could. you could... I don't know if we've got some of the... Um, I'll show you some colouring in. I feel... I don't even want to colour it in. I like it. <laughs> Maybe I'll colour the bag. But just so you can see, you literally apply those textile markers straight onto the fabric and it takes to it as a pen would to paper. It's not... Um, it's not any different to that sort of normal colouring in process. It's not a wizardry. No. <laughs> There's not, nothing complicated about it. So how do we get started making our bear? OK, bag. first thing... If you're going to cut the bag out, do the bag, I would cut the bag out and I've used, I've just made, it's almost like binding, it's a two inch strip folded, sort of pressed in half and then the edges folded into the centre and it all then folded over. I've got one, hang on. <laughs> Instead of explaining it, Arthur. So it's a two inch strip that I've pressed the sides. Oh yeah, just like binding. Into the centre and then would stitch down one side to seal it, tucking the ends in so there are no raw edges at the ends. And that, I think off the top of my head, the, it's about 78 centimetres finished. Okay. And then pop that through. So I cut this out first, because then you can do it in one continual length. If, um, whereas if oh, you cut the bear you out... For, yeah, then yeah. you wouldn't have the length to do it in one go. Just in case. And also, the pattern has... The original pattern has um, an applique heart on one foot. But actually, what would work really well with the pens, I think... This is the... My, the heart template. My very much used heart <laughs> template. But you could place that over the foot... And you could colour in a heart shape. Oh, yes. With, and so you could still get the heart, but you could get... But it. just over in sort of different parts of the fabric? Yes. So you could use that as a sort of template. Of where to colour. Of where to colour. Right. Shall I get yes. started? Yes. Do you do the bear to start with or the bag? What do you normally... I always do the bear Always first. do the bear. Let's go for the bear then. And I always begin... Top down. Head. So, always go for the head. Always the head first. So I'll start with the ears. And the ears are quite fiddly, but take it slowly. A couple of stitches, pause with the needle down, pivot. The front ear is a wider piece than the back ear. And this is so that... And this curve is the same size on both, 
but that just means you have some extra on this side, which then can fold. You can get a folded shape in the ear. Oh, so you get a nice little shape. I don't know if you can see on the ear here. Just gives it a bit of a slightly different dimension, doesn't it? It does. Okay. So I'll start here, and I always have the back ear on top, the smaller piece. I just find it that bit easier. I'm just going to turn the machine off and on because I think the needle has been... We've had so many people there sending in their pictures of their bear in a bag. Lots of people love this pattern. They love the design. We'll, um, we'll show some of those later in the show. It's so popular, the little bear. It's a lovely little gift, isn't it, to give someone, sort of. Well, I've just made three this week to give to... Um, hang on. Sorry, let's start that again. Um, my, my niece is getting married and her flower girls are each going to have a little floral bear. Oh, that's a lovely idea. Sorry, I should have practised before, before, in before in I started. Bag. Did you do it in the... They're going to have all different, a little different bear each? Are they all the same? They're... Um, each in a different colourway of the sort of the same fabric range. So little floral oh, bears. Nice. There's a blue one, a green one, and a pink one. There we go. As I said, all of the instructions. These are lovely instructions. We we said this morning. This is almost like a little book, isn't it? It's um, a really thorough guide of how to make it. You've got all of your, everything, sort of all of your different figures and you've got your photos and step-by-step -step instructions of, you know, the, the technique. So to do the ear, I'll just do a couple of stitches, pause with the needle down and lift the foot up and just move it into position. So although it's small, it is still manageable. And so then... just keeping the foot, keeping the needle down as you sort of turn. Yeah. Yes, lifting, pressing, and just jiggling it into place. And then when that's done, I'm just going to clip V-shaped notches in the seam allowance, taking care to avoid the stitching, but just to remove some of the bulk from the seam allowance. I'll turn that the right way. It really is with toys, because this is familiar even from yesterday, doing our little uh, penguin. Once you yes. start to do, you know, the, 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 the process of toy making, if perhaps you've never done it before, there are really similar techniques that go through, you know, there across are. all of them, aren't there? Making the little sections and the sort of the clipping in and... Once you've made a couple, you start to become really familiar with the, the way they're approached and the way they're made, I think. I'll turn these the right way out. And then I need to pop the fold in. And I'm going to base the end of the ear together to hold the, f the fold in place. And there's no stuffing in the ear, is there? There's no it's stuffing not... in. So just press it down and create that fold just so you get that little bit of depth to the ear. And I've done this one this way. I need to make the other one as a mirror image so the fold will go in the opposite direction. OK. Do you find yourself analysing toys? Oh, well, Do you, it, other people? Yeah, other yeah. people's toys. I'd be like, mm, how was that made? Or how was... Or I don't... I wouldn't have done it like that, or... I love seeing a toy that's been put together in a clever way. In a I'd different think. way. Yes. Oh, I'm terrible in a toy shop. I'll just go and have Worse a Worse than feel. the children oh, be like... Oh, they put the seam there. And, yeah. <laughs> so the phone's going... Like, what's that woman doing? <laughs> you just sort of, like, feeling the... Put all the different seams of the teddy bear. Yes, my family love that when I... Uh, go and examine all the toys and when I say no but look at how this is done this is really clever and I don't really care they're not in the slightest bit interested there we go so the ears are mirror images the folds that way on this one and that way on that one okay let's pull the seam out a bit here because this one looks a bit smaller it's that little detail that it's just really does make a difference, though. It does. You can just see, it just gives it that little bit more character, a little bit more sort of shape, and makes it look more like an ear. Frankly, that's you know, <laughs> it really does. It's rather than it just being a curve, it gives it a bit more. Now for the face, these two side pieces join along here. Now I had somebody contact me about how to make sure the nose is nice and even and not um, it doesn't get puckered in any way. So you need to think when. Doing this, so around the nose, just within the seam allowance, so not into this area. So the seam, I'll do dots for the end of it. The seam will come along this, like that. So we start here, 
So don't go to the end because otherwise it will pull the nose a bit out of shape. Yeah. It's fine at this end, but not at the nose end. So the seed needs to come down here like that and start at that point. So I'm going to line up sort of those two dots and start the seam here and sew up to the back of the head. Okay. And I find it easiest doing this with the head, the middle head on top each time. So when I do the other side, I will start at the back of the head and finish at the nose. So you can just see here on the bear, we're just doing this section here at the front. But you get that really lovely shape. And those are those little ears there. You can just see where Joe was creating that depth. <laughs> He's a happy little bear. I've got deja vu of standing here yesterday with a penguin. I just, when we have little toys on the show, it feels really mean to just sort of put them on the table. They need to stay here. Oh, we've got a stock warning. What's that one on? The, oh, the bumper kit with the three different fabrics. And if you're making three bears, it's also got the textile markers. That's sold out, so, um, oh, that wasn't a stock warning. That was actually just to tell you, well done if you managed to get one of those this morning. That had three, uh, three different fabrics in it and the textile markers. But all of those fabrics are available to buy in a bundle individually this morning. So you've got fish on black um, with your thread and with your stuffing and the instructions. You've got fish on white and you've got the floral frenzy in a black and white colourway as well. So those graphics will just pop up on your screen over the next couple of minutes if you want to look at the different colourways. So I stitched this side on and I'm going to sew this side from the top now. And sewing from this way down, I can then see where this seam, I want to join it with the end, finish at the, where this seam starts. And by doing it in this direction, I've got a clear view of where I need to end the seam here. Yeah, OK. So it was, it was good because this was a thing I didn't necessarily appreciate um, that could be found as a problem, how to sew the nose without causing it to pucker at all. And it was Claire that got in touch with me and she's made, <laughs> she's made um, some brilliant versions of the bear. Can we, look at some, can we look at some pictures of the bears? Let's just watch Joe do this and then we'll look at some... So you're just following the curve round with the quarter of an inch. And there's a sort of corner in the nose. So I'm going to get to this point, pause with the needle down lift the foot and then just readjust for that final bit and I'm just doing the end of the nose now and I can see where I need to finish that dot that you drew on there we go you back stitch as well when you get to I do at each end just to secure it oh I've run out of thread <laughs> oh no <laughs> perfect well, while you do that, let's look at some pictures of people <laughs> that have sent in bears. No worries, don't be silly. Um, so let's have a look whose pictures are... Oh, these are amazing. These were from Wendy. Morning, Wendy. Thank you so much for sending those in. I do love the heart on the foot. That little bit of extra detail is lovely. I love him in the blue. Then we've got some from Mary as well. Oh, bear in the garden. That's another happy little bear, isn't he? Sitting with his... That, one, that bear looks like he's got a little house sat behind him, doesn't he, where he lives? Beautiful. Really beautiful. And we've got one from Margaret as well, who's also made three little bears. We need some porridge with those. It's like Goldilocks and the three bears. They're lovely. I like it with the uh, bow tied round as well. They've put a little, put, tied a little bow round the, um, like a bow tie. That's a nice detail. Oh, so we've got another picture as well being sent in. This is from, oh, Saturday Makes. Wow. So we've had one from Sharon. From Joan, Jules, Jill, Sheila, lots of people. Who was that one from? Nessie, morning Nessie, Diana and Jackie. Thank you so much to all of you. We've had so many. That's just a selection. So lots of people using their Saturday morning to do some, to do some sewing. Thank you so much for sharing those. And I always look at them after the show as well. If we don't get a chance to show them on the show, I'll always go and look at your pictures. I love seeing what you're all up to. And, and it's lovely to see as well some of the fabrics and the projects that we have and that you, you know, all of you making them at home too. Thank you for sharing all of those. Are we back with some thread? We are. I'm just going to test this. has gone through OK. So also remember as well with the... Um, can I do some colouring? I've got permission to colour. <laughs> Yay! This is fatal because I could just do this for the for the rest of the hour, just colour in the colour in the bag. So let's go for an orange. So these are the textile markers. You get a dual um, tipped pen, so you've got a fine nib and a thinner uh, and a thick nib, so you can use those to colour in different sections. And then you can apply the colour straight onto this Michael Miller fabric. It's been designed to have colour put onto it and applied, so I'll just show you that now. 
so relaxing. Just pop the colour straight on wherever you want to. You can combine the colours, you can choose where you want to, where you want to put them. This is lovely, for, you know, for children, but also it's just as an adult project. It's nice and let's go for some yellows. And just imagine this on the bear as well. You know, you could, like Joe said, if you wanted to just colour in the heart on the foot. Then you could. Our producer, Paul, when he made his first ever quilt block, he used colouring fabric. He coloured in a, a skull. <laughs> Which sounds quite sinister, doesn't it? As I said that. But you can just see here, it really changes the sort of the overall effect of the fabric as well. I'm just going to go for that thin and... Oh, sorry, Jo! <laughs> throw, throw the lid at you. But you can just see here. Just, just gives you an idea of how you can start to build the colour. But you can see as well if you just wanted to do the sort of smaller sections and leave these bits in black and white, then you can. And loads of different... You get 20 different colours, so, you know, the choice is all yours. The textile markers are on your screen at the moment, TNCG84. They're always really, really popular when we have them on the show. They usually sell out, so if you do like those, if you're getting those uh, colouring in bears this morning, you might want the markers to, to spice them up a bit. Right, and once both sides of the face are joined, I'll show you from this side. So if have finished the seam there, um, I've not caught any of this section in the stitching, and it just helps at the end to get a good clean finish on the nose. But Should we just show that once more? It was just here, you said. Just in the centre there. There. So these haven't been caught by the um, by those stitches. So you get nice and flat. Okay. And the next job, um, don't sew this bit up yet. It will say in the, in the instructions to do it, but having made a few, I've realised actually leaving this bit open for a while helps, makes it easy joining the back head. So with the right side of the ears then, the front of the ears against the right side of the fabric and with the fold this way. So the, the, the thicker fabric at the top of the ear, the sort of towards the top of the head. Just base the ear in place and then it's between the seam for the middle head and there's a marker to show the other side. Okay. So I'm just going to base that into place so that they're definitely in the right place and held in place and won't slip when I join the back of the head later and it'll end up with wonky ears. And if you baste it in and think it's a bit off, just whip the stitches out. It's nothing and too permanent, is it? No. It? So we've got the, the ears in place. And okay. then there's a tiny little dart here in the centre of the middle head. It just gives it a little bit of roundness. So bring the sides together and just sew the dart closed. Is it strange for you to see people send pictures in of something that you've just... That's something that's come from your head and your imagination and that all these people are making your bears. That's, is that... What does that feel like? It's really lovely because often, because I, I work by myself in a sewing room, I forget that people are doing it and that these bears sort of have a life outside of my sewing table. It's really nice <laughs> to see them being made. So they're the darts. I've closed the dart and just tapered the end slightly just so you get a smooth sort of finish on the top of the head. But that's the face. Done. So that really starts to give you, this helps to give you that curve on the top of the bear's head. You can just see here on the finished one. This one here, the um, under the seat on the black, we've got a stock warning on this one. Oh, there's only two of this one left, so if you do like this colourway, um, PDGC22, that's for the um, under the seat on black. Again, with all your stuffing, your instructions and everything there, and that's 16.95. Oh, there's one left now, Some, and there's one left of the Floral Fantasy on white. So we've, I don't know if we've got a picture of that one. But we'll get, we'll get a picture so you can see there's only one left of that one. Here it is, it's just coming. Again, with everything you need in the bundle to make it. Just one of that one left, so you'll have to be speedy. EMGC77. OK. Let's crack on then, Joe. OK, this is the same way, method, that I did the penguin head yesterday. It was a penguin, wasn't it? Yes. Um, I've put the two back head pieces, one on top of the other, and I'm just going to sew from the top just a really small section just to join them and hold them together so it's from the top of the head down the back a tiny bit this tiny bit here yes 
and it just makes it easier for joining the front and the back head together. And as you said yesterday, rather than going all the way down, that keeps it open, which just makes it easier when you've got the circle to attach to the body. You've got that freedom of movement when you sew it to the body later on. So I'm just going to finger press that open and line up the top of that seam in the back head with the centre, the dart there. Put those together and then sew again, like I did yesterday. And this is always the way I do heads, really. Sew from the top down. So you're just sewing one more gentle curve and you've lined it up at the top, you know it fits evenly, and then doing the other one. Because sewing all the way around, you've got a deeper curve, and making sure everything's on track and lines up in the centre at the top can be a bit it's tricky. tricky. So use that central seam as your guide, really, and go from there to, to, to do the curve. I can't believe how many people are sewing on a Saturday morning. All those pictures, it's lovely. It's lovely when people send pictures in because often it gives me, you know, they give me ideas. Has somebody said, mentioned something on Instagram recently? I can't remember what it was. Oh, and I said, can I, can I say that on air next time? <laughs> As an idea. <laughs> As an idea. Just, yeah. Oh, what am I but doing? But that's the thing, it's a two way street, isn't it? And people have different, with creativity, it's so open, you know, it's so open wide the things you can do and the possibilities. And lots of people different, interpret things in different ways. and. And it's a two-way street in terms of you, you can give inspiration and vice versa. And that's the lovely thing, I think, about social media. It's one of the very, you know, one of the positives that comes out of it is that it's a lovely way to share ideas and, and projects and, it's and it's ask questions. And... and people are really supportive as well. I think especially sewing community, there's always... You know, it's a good community to be It in. is. So I've joined that side, so I'm going to start at the top again and sew the other side together. And by leaving that seam underneath the nose open, it makes this more convenient to sew. Because as well, what we were saying yesterday is that if you do sew all the way down the back of the head, it makes it a really quite a difficult circle. Yes. Then you've got a complete circle to attach to the body. So I, you, if, what I mean is if you've stitched this all the way down to the back of the head here, then this becomes, you know, a really quite tight circle, particularly on a smaller toy. It would be virtually impossible, I think, attach. if you'd close that to then attach it. So the last thing for the face is just to join this seam below the nose. So bring the sides together, and I sew from the bottom up again and finish the nose. Would you mind just showing that once more, just because it wasn't on a close-up, I just want you to be able to see. So it was open. So it's open, so line those up, readjust so the corners meet at the top. Yeah. So that joins, and I sew from the bottom up, and, because then I can see where, where I need to finish. I've got a clear view of the seam I need to stop at. OK. Whereas sometimes if you start there, it's, it's a bit chunky because a few seams meet and you can't see quite so well under the foot. I'm going to grab a colour and get some colouring. So I'm approaching the nose. I'll slow it down a bit. Where to colour? There's too many options. Oh, I went too far then. Just to... But I'm I doing should. it, Joe. Are you going for it? I'm doing it. I'm colouring the bear. Here we go. Let's get a pink one. This is so cool. I think children would love this. I'll colour in bear. Yeah. That'd be great. You can just start to pop the colour on. I don't know if you can see him around this way. I need to have done a bit more, really, for you to get the effect. Let me... I'll keep colouring and you keep telling people how to oh, make the head. <laughs> another, another tip as well, if you've got this fabric, because of the black um, and the eyes and nose being embroidered in black, when you place the pattern pieces out to cut them out, Try and make sure what will be the eye area. Oh, it's white. Is yes, in the white bit. Just so they stand out that little bit more. That's a good that's a very good idea. So the head there. What's the what's the next part? I'll start on the body now. Okay. So I'll keep working my way down. So this is this is an entire side body. So this area will become the stomach 
and this is the back. So it sort of does that. And this opening here looks odd, but that's for the arm. And the reason I've used, I've made it, it's not curved. It's easier because you can stitch a straight line and there's a definite corner there. Pause at the corner. I'll draw this, this on to try. Pause at the corner here with the needle down through the fabric and just readjust to sew across there. Pause again there and then sew up the other side. And it looks like it's this part of the arm fits into this opening and it looks, this looks much smaller, but actually... Once you've pulled that in... It's, it's this section that needs to fit and it does. So that's almost going to lock in, it's just a, it's a, like a... It does and when this fits together, you've got the opening there to stuff the, the arm once the bear's finished. But the arm is all one piece and it does look a bit odd. It looks like it might not marry up and match up, it but does. it does. <laughs> So you could actually, you could do the sewing and you could get the children to do the colouring in as you go, couldn't you, if you wanted to? You, you could, could say, oh, the next, next bit I'm going to do is are these arms. So if you could colour in those <laughs> arms for me and then they can colour them in like I'm, I'm the child and Joe's the adult in this situation. Clearly, I'm just doing the colouring. <laughs> Let me pick some other colours. So I'm pausing at the corners, pivoting it round. I'll just sew up this side. I'm having a lovely time doing this yeah. colouring. Nice and relaxing. Yeah, it's really relaxing. Look, you can start to see where you can just pop the colour on. Oh, we've had another picture sent in as well. Let's see. Oh. Whose are these bears? This is from, from Angela. The heart on the foot is such a lovely touch, isn't it? It looks really, it looks really lovely. You can, and it sort of gives it that, like, made with love. Yes. I can spy lots of sewing things in that ad sewing room, Angela. That's someone who's doing a lot of sewing by the looks of it. <laughs> So I've, I've done one already, but stitch the arm following actually the pen line. Uh, and if you find it easier, draw with a, an erasable pen, draw the lines on to follow. Stitch around there, pivoted at each corner, and that's the arm joined on. And I, actually, I find it easier to work with a bigger piece. So I'll sew these two pieces together along the stomach along the front and then I'll fold the arms over and show how the arms So at the moment we're then creating become the, arms. the front body and the two, the, yes. the, the arms. And the back body as well is all included. Oh gosh, that looks smaller than I thought it would be. It's not Let's a very see. big piece, No, it's, really. quite, it's, quite a, it's quite a small little bear. I'll put some more colour on here. So this is the entire sort of stomach and back body. I mean, it doesn't have the base in yet, so it... And then the arms, they fold over. And so I find it easiest to sew from the back of the arm, around the curve, and up finishing at the top. Can I just show that once more? I think we just missed it. So it's when it was open like this, this was, your, this was the main front bit that you've just attached those two arms to, wasn't it? And then you took it here. Is that right? And the arm, that's the way it will be finished, but I need to fold them so the right sides want... together to Sorry, sew. Want... So I pop them that way around. That round. way around. So starting here, sewing all around the arm and finishing here at the top of the arm. And this, the end of this seam sort of lands where the elbow would be. So if it's not tapered in that much, it doesn't matter because it just sort of forms a natural elbow sort of shape. A funny bone. Yes. <laughs> We started with five options for this this morning. We've only got three left, so um, there are three different colourways in that Michael Miller fabric. There's the Under the Sea Bear in the, um, the darker fabric, the dark blue, uh, the dark black, sorry, the dark fish. Then you've also got it in light, which is on the white background. All of these come with your instructions, all of your stuffing. You'll have plenty of stuffing left over and your thread as well. And you get half a metre of fabric. And then your last option that we've got left is the floral fantasy, and that's on the black background. Which is actually what this bear's been made out of, isn't it? And this is what it looks like when you start to just pop some colour on as well if you want to. It does really change the fabric. There we go, so I've folded the arm together, kept all the body 
part out. And it looks like it would be difficult to keep the body part out of the way, but it's not really. It does fold out of the way. So sewn from the back all the way around the arm and finished at the top. And then I'm just going to clip V-shaped notches just to remove some of the bulk. But yes, somebody suggested on Instagram about you personalise them by, instead of the heart, in, um, embroidering a name or yes. a date on there. And that's what Oh, I, a date's lovely. That's what I did with my nieces. So her wedding date is embroidered onto the feet. Oh, I like of that the idea. For the wedding. Okay, good. There we go. And I'll do the same on the other side. So it's the same again. Fold the arm. Right Let's watch that together. on the machine this time, how you did, what, as you did okay. that. Away. I'm being encouraged to colour from upstairs, so I'm going to carry on colouring while you sew. This could just be a silent show this morning. Me happily colouring away, Joe sewing away. So I line it up because it's quite a tight curve, and I'll just pivot, do a few stitches, pause with the needle down, and just turn that curve. So you've got 20 textile okay. markers there, TNCG84, all of those different colours. Lots of people multi-buying textile markers. Maybe they've got a couple of children. I like that idea that Joe said that if you could pop your, you could give the bear in the bag and you could pop some of the pens in the bag for them to colour it in. I think that's a really nice idea. Actually, I know it's not Christmas today, and we had we had yeah. Christmas yesterday here at Sewing Quarter. You haven't woken up in the wrong month, but um, this would be a nice Christmas gift, wouldn't it? Actually. It would. It's nice mm -hmm. to do during Christmas dinner because Keep them quiet. Well, my children need an activity. Cracker jokes only last so long. Do, they, do you make them wait for presents in the afternoon? Is that why they no. need an activity? No, you do it all in the morning. <laughs> no. You're not that crazy. But they're not allowed to bring things to the table unless it's a toy that has to sit and watch us. It's <laughs> often happened. Just putting some colour on here. It does look really different with the colour on. So you've done both of those arms now. So both the arms are in and that's the sort of upper body section. And then I'm going to do the legs. So you've got these two arm sections here and you keep this this way round for now. And then you've got and the back. Okay. Now the legs, it's all one piece. Oh just right. to try and remove a bit of the Oh cool. Okay. The bulk out of it. And the legs as well, they're sealed into the seam. But they're not pre-stuffed because it would just be impossible to stuff the legs, fit them in, and then try and stuff the sew body the base on yeah. things. Um, so the legs are done a slightly different way than I would normally. I'm going to sew the foot on first. So start at the back and bring it all around this edge. And this does take a bit of practice. Um, it is a bit of a fiddly seam. But again, you can just go really slowly, do a couple of stitches and pivot round. Lost the pedal, hang on, let's give it a kick. <laughs> let's concentrate this bit then, if this is a bit fiddly. So you've got to follow that curve of the foot. I'll just bring it into position as I sew. This is where if you've got a knee lift on your machine, it's brilliant. Oh, it's... just to give you a bit more. So you can keep your hands free and just lift. Doing a couple of stitches at a time and just adjusting. I mean, there are no two ways. Toys are fiddly, really. Because they're, they're obviously quite a small finished product as well, aren't they? So it's. They are. What is lovely about all of these kits is that you've got really thorough instructions in there. So 
there is step-by-step -step photography and but also diagrams too so you've got in terms of your layout and everything it's all highlighted for you isn't it and i drew the diagrams as i was so i had done this bit i did it step by step did this bit laid it out and then would draw and do a sketch and, and then work the illustrations from there. So, they, gone. so i've done them so you know I, I hopefully know, what, nice know what I'm clear. trying to show in like this here. picture. So, these, so this, is yeah. the, this is it here, isn't it? The legs. You can see exactly that what Joe just showed us on the table. And now what we're, what we're making and how we're going to then attach those later on. So this is the foot. I've stitched the bottom foot in and then I'm going to sew the front of the leg together. So just bring those sides together. Sew down and sort of taper the end slightly if you want just to round out the toe of the foot. Have you ever made the bears in anything other than the cotton? I might have made them in fleece once, but that's quite chunky on this side. Yeah, I, I can imagine with the smaller limbs, that that's quite, must, might be quite tricky. And yes, you want to keep the bulk down as much as possible on something this size. And then the back of the leg, instead of sewing it all the way down, I'm going to sew it to about here and leave this open because... See, this one has the opening. Because later they're going to be stuffed through this hole and then sealed separately. OK, will you do that by hand? Yes. Yeah. So I've got to finish bare. I'll bring out in a minute. To sort of Oh, sure. you know what you could do? You know the heart on the foot? If you applique that on, you could do that in a, in a fleece or in a soft... You know those... You um, could. What's that really soft... Um, not a velvet, but, like, you could, you could put something on it just for a sensory. If yeah. you give it to a baby or to a, a small child, then you could just have a slightly different feel on the foot with the heart, couldn't you? Do you know, I've just done exactly what you're supposed... <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. Exactly what you're not supposed to do. Stitch so don't all the way stitch. Across. Don't do what I did and stitch all the way to the bottom. I've made... I've made five of these this week <laughs> and not done this. But this is the whole, this is what, what's meant to happen. You just stitch along down to here, if you can just see. And then there is, um, there's a little gap there where you're going to stuff it in that hole, just in here. And then carried on, this is obviously the stitch from where the foot was sectioned on. So if you did what I did, then unpick your stitches at the bottom and then just secure the end of the stitch the new end of the stitching, if that makes sense. So that sort of back stitch so where you did, but where bit. you should have ended it. Yes. It's my pattern, I've made tons, and I still <laughs> five, I can't believe you've made five this week. That, just just trot that out like it's... <sighs> that's normal. There we go. So I'll turn this the right way out now, and hopefully it'll be clear of what I'm aiming for. So in the back of the leg, at the back of the foot, there's an opening here to stuff the foot and the leg later on. So you can leave that there to put the stuffing in right at the end. Why not? Turn this one out. And then I'm going to base the tops closed to seal the legs, just to make sure the, the front and back are even. But I reposition the top, so instead of... There we go. Instead of sewing them across there, so the seams are together, like that, reposition so the front and the back seam come together so that the foot stick sort of is forward, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it's going to mean that the foot will sit upwards like that, doesn't it? Because you can just see here on the... Um, you can just see... The seam is actually down the front, isn't it, of the foot? Yes. Front of the leg into the foot. But if you can just see that seam there, if you look really closely, Rather than it being on the side, it's on the on the front section, so it gives it that that curve. So instead of sewing across like that, just reposition to bring the back seam and the front seam together, so they line up. Just jiggle the seam along. Almost like a so. boxed corner. Yes. Yeah. And also as well, remember, if this is the first time you ever bought anything from Sewing Quarter this morning, if you order, and if, if it's your first order and you spend over £10, we're giving you an eight-piece Fat Quarter bundle only till midnight tonight, so it's an exclusive offer. We've only got that today. So if you do spend over £10, maybe you buy one of the bear kits this morning, and um, we'll send you that. You can just see it behind me here. On um, There it is. It's an eight-piece Fat Quarter bundle, so you've got lovely uh, forest greens and you've got some reds in there and charcoals and, um, and ivory as well. 
but that's for brand new customers and that's only till midnight tonight so you will need to you will need to um if you want to make the most of that offer you'll have to buy something today right so i'm going to base this leg on and then show how it's based it on if that makes sense put the other one okay there we go so there are markers on the pattern for where the legs so transfer them onto this body piece markers there they won't show up on screen i don't think but i've put the, the leg so that the front of the foot is against the body and just basted the leg in place along that bottom edge and i'll do the same with this one so that and if you want to check just fold it down so when it's finished you want the foot facing forward. To hang. So like you want that. it in, you want the, the pad of the foot really to be upwards in towards the body so when it when it's stuffed, it's going to sit the right way. Yes. You don't want back to front feet. Otherwise, if you sew it that way, you'll have one <laughs> going that way. It'll be doing a bit of a funny <laughs> walk, wouldn't it, if it was... And I've, of course, done that in the past. In making your something quickly. In, your, in yes. your million bears that you've done. I have made this one quite a few times now. But not enough to not then make mistakes. <laughs> Everybody does it. There we go. Just keep putting some colour on here. I want you to sort of see the effect. Have you done it? Have you just done what we said? Joe's done the walking back. Look, here we go. We've got one walking that way and one foot walking that way. Look, there it is. Look, right. look at the little feet. Both times I've said, don't do this. But you and, knew. And her, you knew. She yes. didn't have it programmed in, but it just didn't, didn't I, listen to yourself. Yes. Today is not a good day for me. I, have you had a donut? I, no, I've not had a donut. See, that, if you'd had a donut, it would be different. After this, I'm not leaving. I'm just going to go to bed, I think, <laughs> just in case anything else happens. So, yes, I'll remove this one. Again, Pop so it back don't on. do this. This way. What I really need now is to have removed the. Correct leg. It's definitely the wrong one. We've got about four minutes or so. Okay. I'll, uh, speed on. Right, so I'll pop this on the right way now. Okay. I'm just going to pop some. And try not to get anything else wrong. I do know what I'm doing, honest. We know you know what you're doing. <laughs> You've written all the instructions. We know we know what we're doing. There we go. So the legs are on the... Now he's going to sit up like this right one. Way. And then the head, join the head on. Let's just sit that so you can see. It's just coming. <laughs> just want to show you how you can see that sort of base of the... There's the feet and that's the body there. It would look very different. I don't know if you can see here, just starting to put the colour on. So right sides together, start from one side. And you can pop a pin in to line up the centre of the face with the centre of the body, if you want. I, t I tend not to use pins at all, but... Just because it's obviously if you might give it to a child, you don't necessarily want to have used pins. And also I'm quite clumsy and tend to catch my fingers on them. <laughs> so I'll do this really quickly because I know we're running out of time. No, that's OK. leaving the back open as we did before there's just more room to do this what button have I hit I to might... manipulate it rather than if you had that really acute sort of yes it would just be impossible I think on this size if the head was sealed all the way around there we go actually the bear's going to look very different in the white background fabric than it does in it the does. black there we go so we have a bear, and I'll turn the arms out the right way so it gives the idea. We can see the whole, we can really start to see the shape now. And then the last part is joining the base on. You've got two minutes, what do you reckon? I can, I can go through the highlights. And okay. Two. So this, the bear's all done apart from the base. And when doing the base, start at the back. It's like a bigger version of the foot. And bring it round and there are markers on the base to show where the legs are, so keep those on track. And there's one for the centre, for that centre seam. But if you get to here and think, oh, I just can't carry on with this curve, you can stop here, as long as the legs are sealed in place, and then close all of the back up and stuff through the base if you want. Oh, so you would stuff sort of in here somewhere? You can do if... I leave it so that I seal, fit, fit the base on entirely, and then go back to the seam, the short seam, and then close 
to sort of the top of the back and I stuff through the back. But if you find the base tricky, you can, as long as the legs are sealed in, stop there and stuff through the base. Because instead. you're going to stuff the legs through those little holes that we left at the side. Yes. So the arms can be stuffed via the body, but the legs have to be stuffed separately. And when I do the face, I stuff the head first, just so I can hold it. It's a little bit easier. And I bring the needle with the thread for the nose through the back so that the knot is held inside. And I start, I'll draw it on. I'll do a little stitch, straight stitch in the middle, and then I'll do the side ones. And then just fill in with straight stitches all the way along till the nose is filled in. Yep. And then just stitch a little smile on. And I do two little knots for eyes. French knots or colonial knots. Here. And when I stitch the eyes, I will go from one to the other just to pull them in ever so slightly, just to give them a little bit of, just gives the face a little bit more character. So stitch one eye, go through to the other one, stitch the other one, go back to this one, make a little stitch, just pull them oh, in. Also, it helps to pinch it in a little it bit. It does, it just gives it that little bit of shape. And the tail, which I do have one here somewhere, running stitch all the way round, seam allowance, pull it up, pop some filling in there, fold the raw edges inside and then stitch that to the back. Go round twice just to make sure it's really firmly held onto the back. And that's the little and then pom pom tail. And then he, there he is. No, he, it's nice actually that the legs are stuffed separately because it gives them that they hang. It does, there's dang... The, they, you know, they, yes. they will sort of, they can they swing a bit there, you can just see because rather than if that was stuffed all the way through, they would, they'd be rigid. Yeah, but it sits really comfortably. Really cute. Thank you go. very much, Jo. And Thank you're back, you. aren't you, at 11? I am. We're doing... The giraffe. Shall we grab him? This is what we're doing at 11. A tilted giraffe. So we've got... A, he's a slightly taller than the bear. Just a tiny bit. Yes. I'll leave him here for a second. I'm going to go and look at those fabric options. But thank you very much. Oh, we'll see you, you back at 11. Yes. Yes. OK, look, get a donut. I will do. It's time. It's time. <laughs> OK, so I'll take these instructions with me. These are... Um, We've got some different uh, fabric bundles, uh, fabric options for the bear this morning. The only ones we've got left, we had five options. We've only got these ones left and we've got one new one. I've just seen sneaked on the table, which I'll show you in a second. But we've got the, um, the, the fish frenzy on the white background. So this is the under the sea bear in white, which is what Joe's been working with this morning. It comes with all of your instructions, as I said that are really thoroughly photographed. And like Jo said, she stops at every stage of the make and she draws out a diagram of how those different sections look. We're very low on stock if everybody checks out their baskets on this. BMGC00. But you also get a huge bag of stuffing, enough to make plenty more bears. And um, probably enough for the giraffe and lots of other, lots of other Jo's animals. And you've also got your um, thread for the eyes, like Jo said, pinching those in and the nose when you're doing those knots. Now we've also got another fabric option. This is a new, this is a festive one. It's not Christmas today, but this is a Christmassy fabric. If you wanted to make a bear, a colouring bear, um, with a more festive print, there's only three metres of this in stock, but they've just sneaked it in as we've um, run out of stock of some of those others. But lots of festive decorations. You've got snowmen and gingerbread men, and you've got um, candy canes and baubles and stockings. But again, you can apply the colour to that Michael Miller fabric. 8.45 per half metre. There's only six units of that in stock. There's three metres in total. So PTEQ26. If you want to make a little Christmas bag that's going to be coloured in with the bear. There's a festive twist on it there. I've never seen that colour me fabric, the festive one. Very nice. Well, there's little trains and there's a nice little robin with a candy cane in his mouth. <laughs> So the other options, we looked at the white fish background. There's also the fish on black, which we saw in the uh, completed bear. Half a metre you get of that, so it's enough to make one bear. Looks lovely in the monochrome, but also when you start to pop that colour on as I was, you can probably see me addicted to those pens. It's so relaxing. PDGC22. And I just want to show you the instructions one more time that you get with all of these bundles. So if there were any steps today that we skimmed through with Joe, perhaps if we ran out of time um, and you're concerned that you might not know entirely how to make the bear, don't panic. All of her instructions are here really thoroughly and sort of clearly laid out for you. These are those diagrams she referenced with, um, you know, placement of the feet and the legs. 
and all of your templates to draw around, you know, highlighting how to create the face and pinch those eyes in, as she just said. And there they are. So those instructions come with all the kits this morning. The one you can see there is the floral fantasy on black. That fabric's a retro floral with big sort of circular prints. That's your final colourway that we've got left in stock, OAGC 44. 1695. Now, if you have bought those and you want to apply the colour and you want to, um, you know, to customise it by personalising it with some with some colouring in, these textile markers you get 20 different colours in here, so you can see that whole rainbow of colour. Your darks all the way through to your light yellows and pinks. The light colours work really beautifully on the darker background fabrics, and these are a double-ended pen, so you've got a thicker nib and a thinner nib. I just like these for labelling um, fabrics, as, you know, if you've got school uniforms to mark up and write your name in, then these are great for that as well with that new September term heading in. TNCG84, 20 markers in there, really, really great. They lock in, so once you've ironed them, you can pop those in the washing machine and it's not going to wash out. That colour will stay in place. So those are our three options left for the bear this morning, the floral and the two fish on the black and white. We've also brought in that festive one if you do want to do that. We've only got three metres of that left in stock. In fact, that might already be more limited than that. So if you do like the festive one, you can check that out in the shopping list under the live feed of today's show. Now, also, as I said, Joe is back at 11 doing the Tilda Giraffe. And we've also got Lucy coming back in the next hour. We are doing a K-Facet quilt, which is absolutely stunning. I can't wait to show you this. It's like a rainbow of colour that sort of works its way through. Through. So starting with the light and going through to the darks, it's using um, a 10 inch charm square, so or a layer cake as you might know it as, and it's got we've got 42 different K facet fabrics in those layer cakes to show you this morning. So don't go anywhere, fill up your cup of tea, Lucy and I will be back in three minutes and we'll show you that K facet. Join us on Facebook, simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Sewing Quarter had a ball at the Festival of Quilts. Most importantly, we loved meeting all of you at the Sewing Quarter Cafe. Thanks to everyone who popped by to meet us, including those who joined us for a spot of English paper piecing, all for the great cause, Project Linus. John Scott was even joined by Mandy Shaw on Sunday, and they laughed their way through a demonstration from Mandy's red and white Christmas book. If you didn't have a chance to drop by our stand or couldn't make it to the NEC, then we have a treat for you. We've filmed Mandy Shaw's live demonstration at Festival of Quilts and you can watch the full video over on our website at www.sewingquarter.com. Simply click on the banner at the top of the page, sit back with a cuppa and watch Mandy and John. Did you know there are multiple ways you can contact us even if it's just to ask a question? Our friendly team are always on standby. You can call our customer service team at 0800 112 4433, email us at help at sewingquarter.com, visit our Facebook page, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter at Sewing Quarter and even message us through our website and our presenters will answer your questions live on air. Join us for a three-day quilting fiesta with the incredibly talented Joy Edgington. From Sunday the 27th of August to Tuesday the 29th, Joy will be sharing all her quilting expertise and tips with us. On Sunday the 27th, we will be delving into Joy's world of wadding, learning how to select the correct wadding for the right job and demystifying the properties of them all. Then on Monday the 28th, Joy will be presenting the Elna 730 Pro Quilting Machine. This machine has a fantastic array of functions enabling you to create effortless quilting and sewing projects. With over 170 different stitches and an abundance of complementary accessories, the possibilities are endless. Finally, on Tuesday the 29th, Joy will be teaching us how to jazz up quilt borders with the Flying Geese border method and showing us how to create the Arkansas Crossroad Blocks. 
So make sure you tune in on the 27th, 28th and 29th of August for an insight into Joy's world of quilting. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Good morning, welcome back. It's lovely to have you here with me at Sewing Quarter this morning. I hope you're enjoying that lovely little bear that we made in the last hour. And in this hour, I'm joined by Lucy again and we're doing a K facet quilt. So we were, if you missed it, we were so, so lucky to have the man himself. We had K facet here at Sewing Quarter on the 10th of August. Natasha did some amazing interviews with him. So interesting to hear all about his life and his creativity and, and his sort of, you know, his eye for colour and his interpretation of, of fabric and design is just incredible it was I, I was mesmerized I watched the whole show and um, if you did miss it it's well worth watching back on YouTube and looking at that lots to be learned and lots to be um, inspired by so I mentioned case because we've got two uh, layer cakes or sort of charm they call them charm packs from this fabric range and they are 10 inch squares I know some of you probably think of charm packs as being the five inch ones these are double the size so I'll start by showing you the uh, K facet ones first of all now, the three bundles that we've got this morning, they all come with three metres of optical white. So you can use this for the front of the quilt, the backing and the binding. And it also comes with your thread, as well as the, um, the layer cake itself. So let's have a look at some of these gorgeous different colour prints you've got in here. As I said, he's the, he's the king of colour K facet. You've got really bright, bold colour combinations that you might not even think would work if you put them together, but they really, really do. When you see how Lucy's put these together in the quilt in a moment, you'll see exactly what I mean. Lots of big statement florals. Lots of things sort of inspired by nature. You can see sort of cut crystals and shells. There's the can can dancers. I like that one. <laughs> all of these different fabrics you've got doubles of some of these in here as well but 42 pieces in this charm pack nice big hawaiian hibiscus flowers there they've got another colorway in your can can dancers you get your thread you get your optical white three meters of that solid to use for the front of the quilt which you'll see in a moment you also get the booklet which has got all of your instructions for making this quilt How much is this on its own, the bundle? The so if you want the, um, the, the charm, the, well, the layer cake on its own, if you do want this 10 piece charm, uh, the 10 inch charm pack by itself, it's 49.95. So in that bundle, it's included with your solid white fabric, your thread, and also the book that Lucy's using this morning. So this has got, I'm just going to show you the quilt we're making. You get to see the real thing in a minute, which is lovely. It's this one here. It's the Rainbow Days quilt. So all of your instructions for that in, in this booklet that comes in the bundle. But there is an option to buy the Sunshine Cafe charm pack if you do want it on its own. And that's 49.95 just for this charm pack. So there you can see the whole bundle, the book, the charm pack, the fabric and the thread. Now, the next option is another cave colourway, so I'm going to show you that one. This is your shade, your cave facet shade. So, again, this is from, um, from that collection, but in different colourways. So, you've got lots of lovely earthy greens and purples in this one. Some more yellows and blues. Again, lots of florals. These are 10-inch squares. Let me just show you some of these pre-cuts. Really bright. Oh, that's a nice one. So again, this is coming in a kit form. Let's just try and show you a little bit more. So again, you're getting that can can dancer and all of those different fabrics, but also you get your three meters of white, your thread and the book with all of your instructions. When you see the quilt, you'll see exactly what I mean. You'll see why you want those instructions. We shall, you've got, I know you're gonna to want to replicate what Lucy does this morning. So here's the kit, PPGC09, 
Again, seventy six ninety five with your solids and your book. Now, we do also have a different uh, bundle option this morning, and I don't want anyone to get confused. These charm packs are 10 inch squares, both of the K facet ones. Now, this is actually a fat quarter bundle from Amy Butler, so it's slightly different. You get 12 fabrics in here, and again, you can use this for the quilt. You also get a meter of spot on, so you've got enough fabric here to make the quilt in the size that's written in the book, but you use, you combine that spot on, and you use that in the, um, in the combination alongside this fat quarter bundle to create the quilt. And you also get your white, three metres of white with that. So the reason you're getting four metres of fabric is it's a metre of the blue spot on and three metres of the optical white. WWGC40. So if you do like the cave and you just want that by itself, you don't want to use it with the, uh, with the white or with the book, you're not, you, you, know, you want to use it for another project, you can buy both of the Sunshine and Shade charm packs on their own. So oh, there's only three of the Sunshine charm packs left. So this is the, uh, the Sunshine one is this pink one here where you've got lots of bright pinks and purples, 49.95. And the other colour option is your shade. Let me make that a bit more tidy again. <laughs> give, it, give it a little shake. This is your green and blue one. So some more um, sort of cornflower blues and bright royal blues and lime greens. And the shade 10 inch charm pack QGRW08. Lovely. So Lucy Brennan, she's waiting for me. Let's go over there and get started with this quilt. I love this quilt. I love it too. Do you, uh, Honestly, like, love it. Yeah. Really love it. I, I love want it, it up on the wall all the time behind us. Yeah. It's, this is going to be one you want to take home, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> I will be to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> and then might be bringing it back. That's no, going to be not. it. But look how stunning this is. The, the effect, that rainbow effect, is just lovely. And this is, you said, it's a slightly more advanced project. It's nice for us to have, have that on the show today. Yes, it is. I mean, uh, there are elements of it that are simple. So, um... The piecing um, isn't complicated, but the construction um, is just a little bit different and it just takes, um, you know, an understanding of how blocks come together. So really, you know, anybody can make it and it does talk you through it um, in the pattern. So, um, you know, you've got that there. Um, but I think if you've already made some simple quilts and you've got a good understanding of, of patchwork, um, you'll be... You'll be fine. fine. Yeah, you'll be fine with it. Um, but it, the, it takes a lot of um, concentration and um, thought as to the layout. Okay. So that's the element that you need to focus on, really. To, so the to challenge right. here is, is the layout in terms of where you're placing yes. your colour to get that effect and to get that, to get yeah. that overall finished picture. So this is, yeah. you know, for a beginner, this would perhaps be a challenge, but for an intermediate or more experienced sewer, this yes. is a lovely project. Yes. Yeah. Really lovely one. So I have been a bit naughty in that I wanted a rainbow. So I have mixed the, the two, packs. two packs together. Um, but equally, I think it would look beautiful. And you would be able to create a kind of um, ombre effect going from dark to light, you know, with one of the packs. So you could do that, you know, sort of the, the ready pinks going into the yellow, like I have done here. But you'd do that over the whole, the the whole, whole quilt. Thing. Or you could have going from the green to the purple with, with the other pack. Yeah, so and I think that one even shade, go, one there? even goes to brown, doesn't it? The pink one even yeah, goes the into dark brown. One. So, so um, you, could you could go for more of a sort to. of a gradient effect if you have the sunshine or the shade rather yes. than combining the yeah. two. And and so you get to pick out you're not using the full charm pack in this quilt by any means. So this is two, but those are all the things that I've got left over. <laughs> so the, <laughs> Literally I know. <laughs> so the nice thing about that is then if you want to make this a bigger size, you have enough in the kit to do that. So you don't have to make it just this size that's in the pattern. You know, you if you've got the understanding or... of how to make it bigger, which once you've got the concept of it, it's not really difficult, you would be able to make this into a bigger quilt and you have enough there. So with the white that's in the kit, if you wanted to make it bigger, you might need to um, have a different backing. 
but you would have enough white easily to make this at least double the size. So, so you get th now, now you can understand why you've got the white in that bundle. I, yes. don't, I know at the beginning you might have been thinking, why have you put that in there? But it's for if you want to make the quilt in this size, the three meters of white is enough for the front and the backing and the and binding. binding. Mm -hmm. If you want to scale it up, you've got enough um, fabric in the layer cake to make it a bigger quilt, and you can just use the white for the front, like Lucy just said, yep. and combine it with a different backing and binding. Yes. You could also do it contrasting if you wanted to have the triangle and that strip be the pattern and have the, the white, white as the... like a frame. So there's lots of different things that you, you would um, be able to do with it, you know, to make it your own. I want this quilt. And I, want, I do want to make it bigger, oh, actually. No, now just, I've seen now it seen like this. Effect. And also I think it would be nice to have it going, you know, maybe light to dark to light or something like that. You yeah. know, if you are making it bigger... You, you, you can play with it then and you'd sort of create like a striped effect as well with it. So it's a really beautiful pattern. So I'm sure you're dying to know how to do it. So let's, how do we, how do we start? Okay, so um, the first thing that you need to do is cut lots of strips. Lots? Lots of strips. So you've got, um, uh, you know, three different sizes of strips to cut. So if we're making it the same way I've, I've made this one, you've got... Um, the smaller strip and they get bigger and so you need to center all of these strips on top of each other so because we're going to trim it down later okay, okay. so in the book um, she recommends that you fold each one and put a crease in the middle and you're matching the creases as you go down yep I just sort of eyeballed it and you've got enough leeway so long as it is reasonably central yep. to not have to fold each little piece um, because I think there's 72. And once you've done a few, something, you should you, be you know, able to so, that Yeah, so I think maybe yeah. you could crease the first few, and then, but I wouldn't spend any time creasing every single one and then sewing, so, you know. Yeah, you'll feel like you're working in a laundry, doing a lot of folding. Yes, you <laughs> might do. Um, but, but you could do that for the first few, and then once you've, once you've got it, then um, you're good to go. So um, from the 10-inch square, you have enough to do the four blocks and you have a tiny little strip left over okay so um each in you know each square of fabric you're doing well like half of a half of four blocks if that makes sense yeah it does so you've got enough to make that square there but if you you know you could uh, the reason i haven't completed the quilt is because i want you to see the construction of it because it's easier if i lay it out for you to see how it works. So each row, you know, you're not actually making the square. No, it's because made visually, up of quarters. on first sight this morning, I imagined that like that is a block, like just that piece yes. of that piece of colour or that. And it's really not the case. It's yeah. you know, these are actually laid up. These are, are paired together yeah. to give that diamond effect. Yeah. So through. you've got you know half of one, half of the other make that square, but each one is a quarter of that, of that. whole square. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so once you've done all your pieces like this, you don't, tr you don't trim them. What you need to do is you need to get to this stage where you've got all of your pieces layered up in strips like this. So I did this for all of those half sections, if you like. And then what I did was then I laid it out. So I took a picture as I was going along <laughs> of my progress. So that progress you can report. see here, progress report. This was what it looked like once I'd got all of these pieces and I just laid them out so that I was forming, you know, the, the squares. So I just laid them on top of each other. So this isn't obviously what the final quilt looks like. I wasn't no. doing it for that reason. The reason that I was doing it was to work out where I wanted each one to go. So I picked out these fabrics knowing that I wanted to create um, a rainbow effect. Mm. So I went through and chose the prints on that basis. But then I needed to lay them out like this to work out which bit was going Where to the next for this bit. bit. Because they combine in blocks, don't they? Because they combine in blocks. So you, you can't just... I mean, you could just randomly piece it, but it would be a very scrappy effect. Obviously, the whole point of this design is to get them looking like squares, even though they're not. So it's really important that you get, you know, you do this before you try to sew any of it together 
otherwise it's not going to work. So this is about prep. You do have to put in the it time. It is about to... prep, and, and, and it's about the thought. And I did lay them out, and what I'd originally thought in my head changed once I'd laid them out, and oh, I okay, did move some of them around, you know, so that I got a variety of colour, but also a variety of the size of the prints. You've got some smaller ones some larger ones and it's nice to try and space those out a bit as well so you know for example i didn't want the spots next to each other and this one is a you know is a more detailed whereas this one's slightly bolder and i just wanted to you know just try and play around with. with it and so and what's really starting to make this advance as well is that color is is having the eye of where to put it and yes you, you do need to to lay it out really and to yeah. figure out you could go random but you wouldn't get that overall you effect. You wouldn't have like the same got. effect, no. no. So it's really important that you get to this point and, and lay it out like this. And then what I did that I didn't take a picture of because it just seemed a bit unnecessary was add in the white triangles. So all around the edges you have to add in the white triangles. So and they're they're like they're a half as well. So it's not like you've got one big triangle. Oh they're two you've smaller got the pieces. Two smaller pieces that make up you know that make up that triangle there so you've got the two yeah. pieces like that so um so it's like that they go together so it's important that you lay that out as well because you need to know which ones are the ones that are at the edge because yeah, you don't want you can to see sew them here this is where yes. you've got like two together on your edge sections you should just see like there there obviously at the top here yeah so you don't want to sew a white triangle to a square that's going in the middle. No. You know, so it's really important that you... And if you're going you bigger that again, that would be even further out, wouldn't it? So, you, you know, you'd have more squares in the middle before you place those double triangles together. Yes. So once you've got that layout then with these sections, so I'm just going to finish... I'll just move that up a tiny bit. I'm going to finish this section so you can see what I mean. So as I was laying it out, it was, gonna, it was looking like this... I personally find that quite hard to visualise when it's still a rectangle like that. It's yes. hard, it's, it isn't, that doesn't come naturally to me yes. actually. I have to really work at seeing where those, where the white sections are. Yeah, if I'm really honest, it didn't come completely naturally to me <laughs> <laughs> either. It is, a, it is a little bit different. So it is, it is sort of there working. Yeah. yeah, so it's working on point, but you can see now how that picture didn't look like the finished one because it looks like this as you're laying it out. Yeah. So it looks very strange. And to, to me, this is quite unusual because normally, obviously, I trim all my blocks and then I put them together and sew them into rows. That's, you know, how I'm used to doing it. But I'm not used to laying it out when they're not trimmed. And nothing you is trimmed. It's just, yeah, it's it's all just bit, totally sort of, random. Yeah. Um, so once you've laid it out like that, then you can separate it. So we know that this what piece has to join to this piece. This piece has to join to a triangle. And these pieces join to triangles as well. So you separate it out and you break it down like that. Into four smaller yes. sections. So I recommend that you lay it all out. You do it when there's no pets or children around. <laughs> well, there's no so one they're in the not going to move anything. I would take a picture. I would definitely take a picture so that should things get jumbled up, yeah. you clearly know. And if you were wanting to make it bigger, you might want to lay the whole thing out and then break it down section by section. Yeah. So you can just take a picture of the section that you're going to focus on. And then and come back and do the second to do part. That and then piece it up. So split it somehow in the middle and do it that way. I think that would be would be easier to stay um, organised. Yeah. So so in terms of the piecing, it isn't very difficult. You're, you're cutting the triangles and you cut those from squares. So all the measurements are in the um, instructions there. So that's not particularly difficult. But again, you've got to remember that you're sewing those triangles then are on the bias. So you just need to be careful when you're piecing those um, together. So once you've got it to um, this point, you, you separate it and, and sew them as if they were blocks, but you're still not trimming until you've pieced all these sections together. Oh, okay. So what I was doing, I had it all laid out and then I'd piece this section, piece it, you know, and then lay it out again with them all, you know, like, half like that. Piece, yeah. Sort of, yeah, half piece, just to be sure I knew where I was going. Or you can trim them and then lay it out again. That's You can do that as well. Um, but just to make sure that you're on track. But I wouldn't... Usually, I'd lay them out and I'd sort of stack them up 
and take them and do... I didn't do that because I was so worried I was going to sew... Get it wrong. Get or it just, wrong. Yeah. So I'd kept, I kept it laid out and just took a piece at a time. So ideally, it. you want to keep that there and just go, I'm just going to do that section. Yeah. So you place it back. Well, you can, then... chain, you can chain piece them, but I, would, I wouldn't... I wouldn't make, I'd keep it laid out piece and then get your next piece. Yeah. You know, and you, yeah. can, you can still chain piece, but I just wouldn't sort of stack them up. Unless you've got a method that you know is going to yeah. work. But I'd I was share just, if you do. <laughs> I was worried it, well, I was going to end up putting them um, together wrong. So, because the, you know, this is uh, two piece sections that are going together, which the bulk of the quilt actually is. You haven't got that many that are tri have triangles no, as well. Most of them well. are doubles like Most here. of them are, yeah, the pieces um, mm -hmm. together. And so that just is as simple as putting them right sides together and sewing with a quarter inch seam. Wherever you've got these doubles of colour, which is a lot of this centre section actually, like you say. Yeah. So that's just, it's just really straightforward. So you don't actually make that smaller point into a triangle until quite a lot later on, do you? No, it's quite, it is quite a lot later on. Yeah. And that's what, for me, was a bit different and a bit um, unusual. But the bit that... The part that really took the most time... Well, to be honest, piecing all the little strips together did take quite a long time. Um, but it was then the layout and deciding, you know, where, where things were going to, to go. And it is... Once you, you know, when you've seen the finished quilt, you understand, but if you were to just look at it at this point, I mean, that, that is, you, yeah. doesn't really equate to that. It is, you know, quite difficult to visualise. So when you're laying it out, don't be afraid that it sort of does look a bit odd. Just focus on the print and the colour and how they're playing together. Just ignore the shape of it. Yeah. So you always have to sort of subdivide it in your head, don't you, into really small pockets of yes. whilst maintaining that overall picture on the floor or on a table but yeah. just you're just focusing on that and then and that's why I do recommend build. people take you don't have to print it out like I didn't yeah. need to print the picture out if I had it on my phone or you know you can have it on your camera but just as a reference to make sure that Definitely. you're, that you're that piecing sounds... it correctly so then um with the triangle like we were talking about earlier um you have to overlap this with the dog ears because they're not trimmed off so you want to make sure that you've just got an overlap by quarter of an inch and you start sewing where um it meets so on either end you've got a um the corner point of the triangle is overlapping from the edge of the fabric there. this is what we were talking about with the creative yes. bridge readers these are the dog ears that yeah these are the that, dog that ears are that they there. don't that they don't don't have when you're using those yeah, I think it's exactly that for me that I because you don't have the triangles on the on these sections when it's strips. When that looks like a, a central block in the middle that's a square, it's harder to visualise. But when you can start to imagine that that's condensing to that tiny point, it's just this bit here. Um, then you start, to, you know, at the moment that's a square, but it will become one of these. Uh, sort of a small. Yeah, because they're just strips, it looks very different yeah. than, it, than it being those central points. So I'll try and chain piece these and go a little bit faster. So again, I mean, another way of doing this, if you're not sure if it's overlapping by, by a quarter of an inch, you could press it in half, you know, and match the creases yeah. on the strip and on your triangle. And again, just be careful because it's the bias. You don't want to be pulling um, the white fabric at all because that will stretch it out. So you want to make sure you're not doing that. It's actually as well, I think it's quite unusual to see Kaif with white. It's so often completely saturated in colour. You know, yes. you, you, you completely solidly use all of these colours from a layer cake or a charm pack or, and you don't yeah. incorporate often something quite plain and crisp and there's something about that that actually really helps to, it, it really brings the focus actually, strangely, yeah. to the design and to the colour. I, I, the white makes it very crisp and... It does, it gives it quite a modern look I think as well. I did, I made another quilt with um, his fabric and I, that was a uh, jelly roll and I, and I used a tiny bit of white but even just that little bit of white yeah. did help those colours um, pop a little bit. It almost helps to stop it from being too overwhelming. It, it, like, it means you can yeah. really take in each fabric and, and see it. Yeah. 
So that's the mess <laughs> <laughs> that we've made once you've got your so, so block at this point, together. Right, at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So it's still a square, you can see that, in that big sort of rectangle in the middle. Yeah. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take these pieces and when you're um, pressing, what you want to do is have them go, them, the seams go alternate ways. It just helps when you come to piece it together. So you want to have two going one way and two going the other way. So this one I might press um, towards the triangle. Yeah. And I'll do the same with the opposite and then the reverse for the, for the other ones. And that she says this in the pattern, so um, you don't need to remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've had a message in from Angela. Good morning, nice to hear you this morning, Good Lucy. Evening. Lovely quilt from Angela. Oh, thank Lucy's you. Lucy's got some voice back. Yay! It's a miracle, we can hear her again. <laughs> I was getting ready to do sign language. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I realised I do not know enough sign language. I know a little bit, but not enough. There we go. So once you've pressed them, then you can trim. So what you can do, if you know, you're confident with it, and, I, and again, I'll just say that you should take a picture of your layout, but um, you can just sew all those pieces. So you've got all your sections with your triangle and all your four. But when you come to, if you're chain piecing them, I would do it so that those four blocks are together so that you can press your seams mm. different ways. And when you strip, when you're strip piecing the three sections, you press them um, in different ways as well. So some, those two are the same. So some you're pressing that way and some you're pressing yeah, that way. way. It just means that when you come to put them together, you can, you can put those seams up against each other. So it, it, um, the piecing is, is easier then. So we're going to turn these into squares now. Come on then, show me how. After all that. <laughs> so this is where it be begins to make, um, you know, more sense and starts to look more like... This is where the penny drops. ..what you used to, yeah. to. Yeah. So um, we're going to trim them to five and a half inch squares and really you want a ruler that has a 45 degree mark on. Most of the creative grids rulers, whether you have a square or a triangle, will have that 45 degree line. But it just makes the accuracy of your cutting so much better. Yeah. So that, you know, as I come on to the next bit, you're going to see another slightly trickier part of this quilt is matching all your points perfectly. And a big part of that is trimming your sections your squares accurately really so having the 45 you know it's very easy you know i could just cut a cut a five and a half inch anywhere on this but it's not going to be perfectly aligned if you wanted to go for a wonky look you could, <laughs> yep. you could do that if you want this to, to marry up then but they... if you want all your points matching in your quilt it's really important that you that you um get your you know get your cutting nice and accurate so i've got my five and a half um, inch marks there and I've got the 45 degree line um, lined up with the seam that's running through the centre there. And you, you wouldn't do that with that next seam along, it's with the longest? It's with the one that's running through the centre. Yeah. yeah, so it doesn't look like it's the centre on this strange construction but, it, but ultimately it, it will be the yeah. centre. So it's important that you get that lined up. So, And make sure it is in the corners as well, even if you, know, even if you have to push it back a tiny bit, try and get that, those corner um, points there lined up accurately right on the fabric yeah right on the on the line there so then we're just going to trim these sections off and handily I do happen to have this rotating mat at home <laughs> because trimming these without it is might have taken you even longer yeah a little bit of a slog so you can just rotate that and then again Make sure that you're lining that up really accurately with the five and a half and your 45 degree line running through the centre there. Lucy, this must have taken you so long to do this whole, what we've got in front of us this morning. Well, I'm not going to lie. It's, it took a little while. Yeah. But it's worth it. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, the effect <laughs> is, is amazing. And when you're trimming all the blocks, it does get a little bit, oh, it's another one, another one. But it's funny, you just, 
you, you just you sit down and you do it. The piecing is fa is straightforward. With the strips and everything. Yeah, yeah, with the strips. That's really straightforward. And then and then the layout did take a little bit of time. But the trimming, you know, you start off with a big stack and you and you sort of go, oh no. But then you work your way through it and it does. And you get into a flow of yeah, just. Yeah, and then you're just doing it and it does go quite quickly. It's, you just want to really, don't, you can't cut more than one at once. You really want to make sure you maintain that accuracy so that you get, you know, this. a really nice effect yeah. when you come to finish. So um, I just need to trim all of these. While Lucy's doing that, I'll show you the different fabric bundles that we've got for this quilt this morning. So all of them are teamed with three metres of the optical white solid that you can see is used for the front of the quilt and you've got enough there for your backing and your binding as well. And so there's the Sunshine quilt, which is the K Facet 10 inch charm pack. So you get 42 10 inch squares from K Facet. You also get three meters of the white, as I said, you get your thread and you get the baby quilt book, which is where this rainbow quilt pattern and all of your instructions can be found. Now the next option is another K one, but it's in a different colorway. So this is the shade charm pack. Again, it's the 10 inch charm pack. So you might know it as a layer cake. PPGC at 09, which is more popular at the moment. The, this one, the shade, so that's your blue tones and lots of purples and greens. And the last option is slightly different. So this one here is an Amy Butler. It's a fat quarter pack. So you've got um, also a spot on fabric. You get a meter of the blue spot on, which you can use for the front of the quilt. Then you also get, you can't really see it in that picture, but you've got three meters of the white as well, which is for the front and the backing. And that's from the Soulmate Collection from Amy Butler, WWGC40. Sorry. That's fine. So we're just trimming away. And I just want to um, show you something else. When you come to trim, it's not quite, it's not quite gonna work on this one. It would have worked on a triangle, but I prefer to make sure that I'm trimming all the way around. So, for example, I wouldn't line that, you know, I wouldn't line that up with the edge there. I want to be able to trim from all the sides. So if it's a triangle there, I don't want the triangle straight on the five and a half. I would rather move it into the centre so and be trimming every, each edge. Or every edge of fabric. Yeah, just so that I know it's, you know, it's really accurate how I've cut it. And, it, and those corners, you know, I'm getting that seam lined up with the corners and I'm trimming all of the edges. But you want to have, have come into contact with your rotary cutter with every yes. edge, you know, you don't want to leave one just as it was. No, and, you know, it's quite nice in that, because, you know, you have got a little bit of waste there, but the reason that this is staggered is that so that you're not wasting more fabric. And also it means... I can't go like that and think I'm going to get a five no, and a half inch. It's not going to you know, happen. <laughs> there are times when I'm trimming a lot and I'm worried I'm going to cut one wrong, but you clearly can see that isn't, a, you know, you know that that's your central strip and that you're cutting a five and a half inch square. So this has been worked out very nicely. It's an it's, obvious one. Yeah. Yeah. And this is actually the block that you'll be doing more of, isn't it? More than the triangles, because the two yes. triangles are your edge pieces. Um, but if you're doing the main central section of the quilt where you've got all of those, all of that colour, this is the block you'll work with a lot. Yes, and I, and I intentionally um, just left those end ones so that I could show you how to piece the rows together because, again, that is something that is a little bit tricky and where the accuracy is really important. So I didn't want to just leave a to bit in the middle and not and be then, able yeah. to do it. Yeah. And also I think it helps to show the construction then that you've got those um, triangle pieces around the outside. So then when she, once you've got it to this point, it yes. makes a lot more sense. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it's much easier to see, um, you know, your, your layout there and how that works. So I think just shift those. Oh, we're getting finished picture now. Like that there. We need to get, a, we need, you need to see the whole thing. You get that whole overall effect. Happy with colour placement? Yeah, I'm very happy. I took a picture to check. Just to check. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. That looks lovely. Really, really lovely. It's nice to do a slightly more advanced project as well, even though it's not something I could necessarily jump straight in and do. Yeah. It's nice to, you know, this is, if you are a beginner as well, to see what something you could work towards, you know, yeah. this is something. 
And it is a bit more time consuming. This isn't the easy, you know, this isn't this the isn't easiest afternoon. quilt to quilt. No. make. No, not by any means. But it is something that then the finished effect is so worth, you know, you, when you've put the time in, but it's, it's, it's worth, worth it. it. Yeah, yeah it's worth it. So, you, like, again, as I said before, you, you can make this bigger if you wanted to. Um, in the pattern, she adds a border strip to either side, not right. all the way round, just on either side to make it um, uh, slightly wider. Um, than it is at the moment. And I did take a picture. I'll just show. Oh, do you want to I'm show? Yes, yeah, show, show the that. border yeah. there. Could you use the remaining cake for that if you wanted to? Um, well, yeah. I mean, you've got you have got, got enough. You've got enough in yeah. that charm pack. You've got. But you, it would be it would be sort of more patchwork then because it's just a strip. So that border is just a plain. Oh, you can see there. Yeah. So it's just two plain strips. But what's really nice about that is then it becomes like it's floating. Yes. Because it's just white around the edges, it just seems like that's, that's floating in the appeared. middle. Whereas if I finished it now, yes, of course, that's very pretty. But actually adding those borders just gives it that Extra. further dimension. Yeah, and I think that's really beautiful. So once I'd gotten to that point, although I hadn't finished <laughs> yeah. that corner, I did take another picture because then what I was doing, obviously, is sewing the rows together. And again, should you go wrong at this point... You know, it's just a bit of a pain. So I always, I took another picture to reference then to make sure as I was sewing my rows together that I was just where I was meant to yeah. be. Yeah, so you work this in rows now? Yes, so That's now you plan. just work it in rows. So this is, you know, this is the standard, um, you know, piece your, uh, piece your rows together. But I, So I'm going to add these blocks to the rows and then show you how to um, put the put rows together. together. So if you have done a lot of quilting, then... You know, you'll be. This feels more like normal territory you'll now, be where fine. you've got blocks and just. It is a bit, a bit more normal. But hopefully, if you've paid attention to the pattern, or what I said, you <laughs> pressed them um, alternate sides. Yeah. So what that means is, when you come to put these right sides together, you've got them going in different directions, so you can butt up those sections. Um, yeah. there to show that that's where they lined up. So, unfortunately, that middle one I have, I've pressed the same way. But at this point, I'm just going with it. Go so, I might have a bit of bulk there in the seam. But it's really important that you're matching um, the corner seam there, that that's going to run together. So, you want to pin that in place. And then, also, the... Um, where you, you can butt these up. Now, you can pin or you can check that they're, that they're up close together as you're, as you're going along. Um, I, do, I do like to pin just to have the accuracy, but for speed purposes, when I was making this quilt, truthfully, I didn't, didn't pin every this. seam, no. And it's accurate. It looks, you know, it's still you've had that. Yeah, but I was, I was stopping and checking each seam as I was going along, so, you know. <laughs> it's, it's just your personal preference as to as to what you do, whatever um, you're in the mood for. <laughs> Someone's asked for the finished size for this quilt. It's 40 inches by 40 inches if you go with the um, the four rows like we've got here and the border either side. Um, but obviously, as we've been talking about this morning, if you wanted to make this bigger, oh, and if anybody does, please send in a photo. I would um, love wouldn't to you? see. I'd love yeah, to see a double see a that. double size of this. Um, if you obviously if you were making it bigger, you'd have an 80 inch um, by 80 inch. But each block is five inches as well. And it is really important that you press your seams, you know, well for, for these blocks as well, because you don't want to end up, you know, bits flipping over or um, whatever there, that's okay. That one's a tiny bit off and that one's perfect. <laughs> so you're going to start... And just see they're creating that shape. Okay. That's not far enough off that I'd do that again. You that would be oh, okay. I just that would be all right with me. Yeah. It does you, you kind of have to, you know. I think there was in the whole of this there was one. Did I read it? I might have not redone it. No, maybe Rebel. I did redo it. I maybe redid one. Um, but provided that you've it is in the cutting. It really is in the cutting. Getting that cutting accurate yeah. is what's going to mean that your that your seams match up. So 
If you really want to do this pattern and your ruler does not have a 45 degree angle on it, I would recommend getting Easy one that one. does because it's worth it to have the final result. It, I have to say, it would be incredibly infuriating to do this whole thing and then it not be precise and you know to not not quite match up or for the angle to be slightly off or it just wouldn't have that visual impact that, that, that this one has yeah, got it would the you know the piecing is is important as well obviously but if you have cut accuracy accurately sorry it does make piecing easier yeah. so that's my two cents now, the most popular is the shade bundle at the moment. So let's have a look at that. I don't know if I've got one. Uh, I'll show you that again in a minute, but that's the blues and greens. And also, you get three metres of white in there. I've been requested if we can show you quite how much fabric that is. And producer Paul wants us to hold this across the whole studio. Paul, I've got a quilt to make. <laughs> look, it's this is a what lot. we're doing. I feel like we're doing... We're working in a laundrette this morning. I know. Here we go. This is how much white fabric you get. Three metres. So you get all of that. <laughs> we have to do a dance now like this. <laughs> so you get three metres of this and you also get the 42-piece K-facet um, charm pack, which is a 10-inch square, so it's like a layer cake. Um, and then you also get your thread and your book, PPGC09. <laughs> Lucy's got important piecing to do. I know. She hasn't got finished time this. for wafting. So, again, that's fine. So you, you definitely have enough if you want to make that bigger. bigger. Um, and then when it comes to doing the corner, um, you know, the pieces with the triangles, you've got nothing to match. No. So that's, well, you've got the corners and that's it. So that makes that um, slightly easier. So there are bits of it that come together quite quickly. I do like what you said about the border almost makes it look like the colour just appears out of... Yes. You know, like, like, like it's floating. Like floating, that's really nice. And it's fun to do something a bit different, you know. When, when I was looking at the construction of this quilt, I thought, oh, well, that's, di you know, yeah. that's different. That isn't something that I've... Um, done before so it's nice to also well, you, you know you're mastering another slightly different technique and yes. to just feel like you've i think the sense of achievement when it's something new or slightly different is although there might be frustrations in the process is also yeah. really satisfying yeah and it wasn't you know i mean if you were making this really big it might get a little bit repetitive but there are a lot of patterns that i've worked on that are really repetitive and sometimes yeah. i'm actually in the mood for that i don't want to be every single step I'm doing to be completely different. There is that meditative... Yeah, process you know, of being yeah, in the, of doing, Just in the flow of something. Yeah. And even with the cutting, there's a fair bit of cutting out, but it's all strips, so it's not anything... Well, and the triangles for the edges, but the, the majority of it is, is just cutting, the, cutting out the strips. So, um, And you can uh, lay, layer up your charm pack <laughs> we have um, to keep shit like know, it's, it's really called this, this company called it a charm pack but it is what you might know as a as a layer cake it's what i would refer to it as but it's just stop myself and um, but you can layer up those 10 inch squares um when you're doing your, the cutting out obviously that makes it go much yeah. quicker as well and that was another fun bit was choosing which ones you to know, use picking which because ones there's, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think how many colors you've got in here three four 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 16, 16, 18. And you get 42 pieces in the charm pack. So you're still going to have 24 yeah. 10-inch squares left from that cave facet. You've still got loads, you know, yes. to either double these, to do a double size of the quilt or just for any other projects for your stash. Um, you know, you could have matching cushions or you could do yeah. anything. You've still got loads and loads of fabric left over. So for um, when it comes to pressing... You've got a couple of options. You, well, I mean, you can do however. There's lots of different ways you could do it. But um, I would suggest either pressing all those seams in between your blocks open okay. or pressing them all one way. So um, each row I've pressed a different way. So this one, this way, this one, this way, so that I can um, join them together easily. If you really want to reduce the bulk, because there is a lot of seams, yeah. Um, you can press them open, but obviously okay. that's more time consuming. And so it's just a matter of personal preference. And some people don't mind quilting through 
if they're all you know, one the way. seams. Because also um, then they do butt up against each other, don't they? Yeah, so they it, sort of fit it in. definitely does make uh, piecing it together a little bit easier. Um, but it's still, you know, so it's just, it's up to you what you want to do. So then once you've got your rows, you're going to put your rows together. We've got about eight minutes. Do you think that's okay? Oh, oh, I don't know. Okay. So um, I'll quickly say, and then I'll get on with it. But this, this is the bit that you do want to spend time over because if you rush this seam and your points aren't matching, again, Blech. you just, you it's know, just and then it's just not... unpicking yeah. and, you know, it's just not worth it. So because I've pressed them in uh, different directions, it means where they're meeting, I can just uh, butt them up against each other. Yeah. But again, I like to just fold it back and check that those points are going to meet because that's the important bit. And if any of your accuracy is slightly off, it's more important that those points are meeting than it is that the edge is lined up. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it's, that's where you're going to notice if it's gone wrong. And, and if it's a little bit over, you can hide that in your seam allowance. Yeah. Okay. Because, because it's an angular effect, and yeah. it, so it has to be... So then, I don't just want to match those bits. I want to match... All the way along. All the way along. So you really... You either want to pin or be checking it as you're sewing to make sure that these are meeting. And you don't just want them meeting at the edge, you want them meeting quarter of an inch away. So if you've pressed in either direction, you can, you know, feel with your fingers and make sure that those are nestling um, together. And then stick a pin in. That's a nice word. I was just thinking that. Was... Nestling. Yeah. It's nicer than me keep saying botting up against you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to think of what the word was. That was it, nestling. So you need to do that all the way along. And again, that those central points are, that that's meeting up. Now, you can see there, there's a little bit of bulk, but that's because it's on the bias, okay? So can you see there's like a slight ripple there? Tiny little bit. It's tiny, yeah. There, yeah. But it will come out, it's so long as you've pinned, because it's on the bias, it will sort of, you know, you can make it go back. But as you're handling all those rows, you just need to be mindful of sections that might, you know, could distort or misbehave. whatever, misbehave, yeah. So the key to this is pinning all the way along and not just checking at the edge, but also taking it back, lifting it back sort of a quarter of an inch and checking yes. that the, the seams are matching but up further down. that's where it's matching. I think quite, you know, sometimes people don't get the perfect points because they're just matching that edge, mm. but that's not where you're sewing. It isn't that bit that matters. It's a quarter it's of an inch down. in, that's where it's meeting. Because that's what's going to actually be visual on the top of the quilt. Exactly, yeah. So you can pin as you prefer. Some people would rather have, um, you know, put two pins either side. I tend to pin diagonally, um, but, you know, it, that's really up to you. So I might, from this point, just be checking it as I'm sewing, because for me, I think that's quicker than pinning. And then I might be able to try and at least get one row on in the time I've got left. About five-ish minutes. OK, so, so I'm just going to do where they're... Don't do anything that's going to mean meeting. this isn't what it needs to be at the I end. I know, I will not. You, we're not compromising <laughs> at this point. Finished, no, it's just, we're just tough. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, you're not getting this far for it to then not, not quite match up. But that's, you know, it is worth, it's worth taking your time over. It isn't a race even when I'm on air. It's no. not a race. And so, you, you know, you don't, you don't... It's, it's more time unpicking it and repeating it than it is just to, to, get, to get it pinned in place and get everything um, right the first time yeah. or as close to as you can. Now, if you've sewn the row together and you find there's one point that's not right, don't unpick the whole row and fix that bit. Just unpick a small section around where your point doesn't meet, oh, right. and repin and stitch over that. Because the rest, if the rest of it is looking pretty much right, it's yes. just going to be that. It's not where worth unpicking the, the whole that thing. It's just not quite gone. Yeah, yeah. Or you've just not pinned it, or it's shifted while you. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of things that can happen. It's only really the triangle bits that are, um, diff, you know, on the bias. But I'd love a bag in this block, this pattern. Yeah, it'd be lovely. 
And where those seams meet, you are going through, you know, quite a few layers of fabric. So you can just take, you know, don't force it through with your machine. Just, just take your time. Sometimes if I'm going through a lot of layers, I'll even um, hand crank, just to, you know, to, to get it through. It's not that bulky, but if, if you find it struggling, just, um, just go slow, take your time. And yes, I sew over pins sometimes, and I know I'm not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> That's another one where it's like debate, Sorry. isn't it? Some people hate it, and some people yeah. are okay with you it. You should you you shouldn't really for your machine, and just for for safety reasons, you you really shouldn't. But sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So you can see now, this is how I was doing it, was going to each one and checking. Yeah, you know, when you get You can there. even just sort of hold it with your finger or if you have um, like a stiletto tool or something that you use to um, match, you know, to hold the fabric in place. What's a stiletto tool? Like a little, like an awl. Oh, right, yeah. That you can use just to... To feed it through, to, sort of. Yeah, I mean, you want to be careful not to push with it, but it's, it just means you can get closer um, to the needle and you're, you're not at risk of yeah. and sewing if you through your nails, finger. Then you're not gonna... I know, yeah. That could We've get got a dangerous. couple of minutes, so okay. don't... So, as well this morning, remember, if you like those charm packs, the um, shade and sunshine, there is the option to buy those on their own. You don't have to buy it in the bundle with all of the white fabric in the book. So, if you do want to buy just the 42-piece 10-inch squares um, either, in either colourway, you've got the um, more sort of blues and greens, um, and you've also got, then got the more pinky and ready bundle. Those are 49 95 so I don't know if we've got a picture of those or not, but if not, I'll show you those in a minute, so you can sort of get an idea of the colours and designs that are in each one. All of the actual quilt bundles come with that massive length, as Lucy and I just showed you, the three metres of white fabric, which is enough for the front, back and binding. And the 42-piece charm pack, you're only going to use uh, 18, I think we said, so you're going to have, have loads of 10-inch uh, squares left over. And also then you've got your um, instructions from the baby quilt book. And there are other quilts in here as well, it's not just that one. Um, and also your thread. Yeah, there's quite a few patterns in there, actually, yeah, that well, I really I want to do. Seven. They're really nice. I think there were seven projects. Yes, yeah, seven projects. I was going to show one, actually. Where is it? I'll let you do this. Let's focus okay. on that. Okay, well, I've, just, I've got to take all the pins out, not lose my pin cushion. So the uh, shade bundle is... Oh, the shade just by itself, so not with all of the fabric, just the 10-inch square. This is the one coming up on your screens at the moment. And this is the more greeny, bluey sort of one. QGRW08. The other one is Sunshine. That's your... We've got really limited stock on that one now. Um, reds and pinks. Again, 10-inch squares. PORW03. Oh, there's one left of that, so maybe give the call centre a ring, 0800 112 4433. But you can still get it in the bundle with the three metres of, fab of, of white fabric and your threads and book, which is that option. OK. Yay. So you might have heard me exhale. Yes. In like, <laughs> because oh. all the points are matching it and works. it's fine. So it needs a press. It does need a press. Um, but the points are fine on that one. Um, so that's and so then you repeat and that would be my final row and that's how it will look i hope you're proud of that one i am proud of it that is, you should be proud of that, that yeah. is, it's so i'm going to sew that row on it do the borders you're going to do that straight it. away now when you come out of we'll here. do it no i've got to get train to catch oh train to catch but i, but to I will be we'll i will finish one. it off yeah because i think it is a beautiful quilt and it do, it looks so lovely in these colors really really beautiful Gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you so much, yeah. Lucy. I won't thank see you now that you've got the dash off. I know. Oh, I'm glad your voice Thanks, is, is coming back as well. Yes. It's all good. Yes. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Can, you. I, want, I want to see this one back. Yes, I'll with that white floating sections either side. Yes. <laughs> Let's look at these fabric options then. So, um, as I said, we've had the sunshine and shade um, options from K Facet. I'll just show you some of those colours so you can see more of what was in there because I know on the still uh, graphic that comes up on your screen, you can't really get a taste of what's in the collection. So, um, oranges and pinks, first of all. This one is your sunshine, I believe. Yes, yeah, sunshine. But look at some of these bright, bold... You've not even seen some of these because you only use a couple of them in the, uh, in the quilts. You're only using 18. 
But I mean, you can really then, if you're only using 18 of those, you can really be fussy and choosy about which ones you like, where you want to lay them out. Obviously, as well, you can also then pop them in your stash for other projects. Or I would be tempted to just scale it up and go for the, go for, rather than the 40 by 40 quilt, go for the 80 by 80. That would just, oh, I need to see a picture of one of those. It might be a while before someone manages to complete one, but that can come one's a really nice fun print. I don't know if you can see there. Lots of colours. You've got some lighter ones as well. So if you are going to go for that sort of ombre effect, like Lucy said, with the rainbow quilt, you do need to check out your baskets on that one. There's only one left of this on its own, but if you do like that one with the white, three metres of white and your thread and your book. HFGC77. Which one's been more popular? Oh, the shade. So let's have a look at that. So the shade pack, again, is everything you've just seen in that bundle, but we swap in a different, um, a different charm pack of the 10-inch squares. So let's look at these blues and greens. Oh, nice little bird one there. And also, this has been the most popular by itself, really popular um, fabrics this morning. And as I said earlier in the show, if you missed it, if you missed when Kaif was in on the 10th of August, it's so worth going back and watching the show. We had him, the man himself, we had Kaif Fassett here at Sewing Quarter talking all about his creative process and his inspiration and, you know, how he, his eye for colour and... It's on YouTube if you do want to go back and watch that. But these are some of, just some of the colours that are in this, in this collection. 10-inch squares... PP GC09. The last option, just quickly, is an Amy Butler one. Um, it's fat quarters, so you get 12 fat quarters. You also get a metre of the blue spot on, which you can combine with the fat quarters to make the quilt. And again, three metres of the white fabric. But some nice different prints in that fat quarter bundle from the Soulmate collection. Now... Joe Carter is back after this break, so you're not, we've got a Tilda giraffe. We've never had the giraffe on the show before. It's a nice little lanky, tall giraffe. I think you're going to love it. And um, we've got really gorgeous. Joe's going to be here in three minutes doing that. So don't go anywhere. Come and meet our giraffe. We'll see you in three. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news, and share your own creations with us. For this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do a running stitch which is a really simple row of stitches that is creating a nice straight line for you. So we're going to start with the back of the fabric, we're going to bring the needle up through the back to the front and we're going to make a small stitch. Now the size of this stitch would really depend on what it is that you're doing but I'm just going to keep this to a sort of small to medium sized stitch so you can see where I'm going. So and you can see I've gone in and out of the fabric and I'm going to bring the needle back through to the front with the same distance of the stitch I've just created. I'm going to go back into the fabric and then out of the fabric. So this is great if you need to sew something at home. And there's also another quick method where you can also just use the needle and make several stitches at once by piercing the fabric as you go along. So you can see that I've got three stitches there on my needle already, and now I just need to pull that through. So there we have a running stitch. Join John Scott and Tilly Rose on Friday the 1st of September for an extra special Tilda Harvest Day. From pumpkin oranges, dazzling blues and delicate floral patterns, this brand new collection from fabric designer Tilda is perfect to brighten up the autumnal nights. At 8am, Tilly will be showing us her patchwork techniques, creating a patchwork cushion out of brand new Tilda fat quarter bundles. Tilly will be back on screen at 10am showing us how to turn these gorgeous new fabrics into a fabulous travel notebook cover, perfect for personalising those plain notebooks. Join John at 9 and 11 a.m. to see the full Tilda range showcased in all its glory. So make sure you don't miss out on the incredible new Tilda Harvest collection on September the 1st, 8 a.m. to midday. 
only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Britain's favourite sewing show is coming to London and will be there with bells on. The Great British Sewing Bee Live is taking place over four days from the 21st to the 24th of September at XL London. If you're a hobbyist dressmaker who's been inspired by what you've seen on the Sewing Bee, a seasoned professional looking for new ideas, or just fancy taking dressmaking up for the first time, this is the event for you. We are proudly sponsoring the Demo Theatre with live performances from designer, author and former Sewing Bee contestant Jennifer Taylor throughout the weekend. And with our discount code SQD, you'll get £1.50 off your ticket. So what are you waiting for? Grab your tickets now and join the buzz at the Great British Sewing Bee live this September. Good morning. Welcome back to our final hour at Sewing Court this morning. Thank you for being with us today. We've had Lucy just on there with that beautiful K facet quilt. And in this hour, well, we're having a debate because I say giraffe and other people in the studio are saying giraffe, but I do say giraffe. We're making a tilde giraffe in this hour with Joe Carter. So another lovely toy option. This is a slightly lankier toy. I don't know if we can, we, he might have spotted him on our sewing machine this morning. Let me show you him in the Tilda Studio book. So I'm saying him, it could be a girl, and there's some wardrobe options as well for this giraffe this morning. This is one in a little dress there, you can see. It's a lovely tall toy. And then you've also got, so you've got the dress there, and you've also got dungarees. Oh, these are the dungarees, actually. And this is it with the little dress. But this book, there are loads of projects in here. We've got gorgeous um, the Tilda angels in different seasons. So they've got summer and spring angels. There's an elephant that we've had on the show before and also different things for around the home. So they've got storage baskets and bags. We'll give that a little bit more time later, but just to show you where the giraffe's coming from. Now, if it's your first order today, if you've never bought anything from Sewing Quarter before, well, first of all, welcome. Welcome to Sewing Quarter. Um, and for today only until midnight, this is an exclusive offer. We're giving you a free Fat Quarter bundle. So if you spend £10 or more, you get eight free Fat Quarters in this bundle here. These are 100% cotton from So Easy. That's only till midnight tonight, so if you do want to make the most of that, then please do do that today. So, we've got three, four different fabric bundles for our giraffe this morning. Which one do we want to start with? The stone spotty, which is all spots. Or has it got some linear ones in it? Which one is it? It's all spots. So, um, we've got, the, as I said, four, dif four different colourways. This is the one we've made, which is a really lovely colour combination, because it's sort of a, there he is, in his dungarees. <laughs> so in that collection you can see you've got a spot on green you've got a spot on pastel pink and the spot on stone colour so it's quite a traditional coloured giraffe but beautiful if you want to make the dungarees or the dress in those brighter colours that's our first option I've got a sneaky suspicion that one might be the most popular this morning but we shall see now we've also got a brighter one so this has got sort of a, a lobster coral colour here with your spot on then you've got a sunshine golden yellow crosshatch one, um, a half a metre of that, and half a metre of cornflower blue. With all of these, you also get your stuffing, a huge bag of stuffing. You get thread and a skein for um, doing your eyes. So it's an, everything you need there to make your giraffe. Next one, this is another perhaps maybe more traditional colours because you've got greens and sort of stony colour. It is a more golden spot on. This one's called sand spot on. Then you've got your green linear look and that Christmas red spot on there as well. Again with your threads and the stuffing. This is the huge bag of stuffing you get, so plenty if you're doing that Michael Miller bear from earlier or you know any of these, um, any of our toys. 
Our last option, this is a lovely sort of more, more soft pastel -y bundle. So you've got a duck egg blue spot on, half a metre. A dusty rose. And a nice clean ivory there. Again, you get that nice sheen with the crosshatch one. And your thread with this bundle. Again, a cream. KX GC 11. Joe, let's look at this giraffe. Look at this. And you need to see how, I, I think, I don't, I don't quite know how we're going to show you the scale. He's a nice tall giraffe, isn't he? He is. I don't, how big is he? I don't know. We need to. Oh, I have a tape measure. 19? Maybe he looks like he's laid down for an operation, doesn't he? So he needs a heart monitor on. 46 centimetres. 46 centimetres. It's quite a tall toy, but really, really lovely. And I love him in his little dungarees. And there's the option to do it in a cute little dress too, isn't there? There is. Okay. Now, this is a Tilda toy, so slightly different, obviously different to the ones that you design yourself. How do you find working with the Tilda designs? I really like it. I like, I like different techniques and seeing how other people approach things. So I quite enjoy making... And there's such a distinctive look to Tilda toys Absolutely. as well. I really enjoy making them. They're all, it, because they're, as well, they're quite whimsical, aren't they? And they're they very, are. you can sort of see just even, and this, this colour combination is very Tilda, I would say, you know, yes. the, the green, the soft greens and pinks. But they are very, I think you could spot a Tilda toy. If you've had any of the toys in a bag, you know. You can. They're quite iconic. They are. And there's, there's a look and there's a technique and they're, they're really, yes, there's a definite Tilda style sort of across the pattern and the look. Um, but I, I love that it's a stylized animal, but then it really keeps... It has the shapes in that you would find in an actual giraffe, that slight bend, um, the shapes around here. It really does mirror... The traditional, what you would, what you would expect to find, really, in a, in a giraffe. Now, am I right in thinking this was a slightly more advanced toy? I think anyone could tackle this toy... Um, I think what to bear in mind, it's, it's at first getting used to the way it's done. Yeah. So I'll show that in a minute. But um, no, I think anyone could tackle this, really. There okay. are a few, there are ways I would do it to make it a bit easier. But um, everyone has their own method of tackling things anyway. So there's no right or wrong. It's the method you're most comfortable with a lot of the time. OK, should we get started then? OK, but this is, I would definitely stick to the way Tilda make the body pieces. Often when I make a toy, I make the limbs so they join into the seams and things, but they, these are all made as separate pieces and they're all stitched together at the end. So the arms are stitched on at the end and the legs and the horns and the ears. And just see here. And these are all attached. We can't see the legs actually because they've got, <laughs> they've got his dungarees on. These, all of these sort of sections are made separately. Okay. And with that as well, when you're hand sewing it on, if you think it doesn't look quite right, just undo a few stitches. It's, it's easier than unpicking machine stitching. Because you can tweak the position, can't you? You get can. exactly where, you, where it fits. So the pattern piece for the giraffe, this is the small one. It comes in two sizes in the book. Oh, so right. So there's a taller giraffe than this one. <laughs> so you could have a family of giraffes. Let's see. He's looking at me behind. Here he is. They're saying, tickle the giraffe on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so this is a slightly smaller, shorter giraffe, a baby this one. This is a shorter one. So you draw around the template from the book. The, the body piece needs um, fixing together. It doesn't quite fit on the page, so you, you have to join. I mean, it's dotted, just match up the dotted line here for the top and the bottom of the body piece. All right. So they're really clear. And then double your fabric over, right sides together. And then draw out, it says body times two. Well, we've doubled it over, so we'll have two. I've drawn round in water erasable pen. And then we follow these lines for the sewing. And that means you do keep, because when there's a seam allowance, you can sort of lose some of the detail. You, ke you keep the sort of straight front bit of the snout and round here, mm. that sort of classic giraffe shape. So I do like this way of doing it. It's not the way I do it, but it, I do like it. Just because it means that you get exactly what's on the page. You don't you do. end up with a slightly altered version because you've lost it in seam allowance. Yes, you've maybe taken a bit more on the seam allowance or a bit less. This, you've got the exact shape that we're going for. That's how you get the iconic Tilda look. That's it how it looks exactly like what you see in the book because you've copied it. 
It is. And with this pattern piece, these sections here, we're not going to sew these because these are the darts that box, they box the corners to give the body a bit of shape. Okay. So right. I'm just going to sew a tiny fraction here, which is marked on this pattern. So a tiny fraction there. And then I'm going to sew from here, stopping here for the dart in the head and then continuing round here. So I'll, I'll crack on. Okay. I was just seeing, I don't know how it's best to take the dungarees off, but just so you can see that the, how the legs are attached, like Joe was saying, rather than um, being in with the body, that you put them on afterwards. So you can just see here how they're attached. This giraffe has a whole wardrobe as well. It's quite impressive, it isn't it? I'm just going to do a quick foot change on the machine. Okay. Sorry. But as well, the thing is, you could you could have different colour options for the wardrobe. If you wanted to chop and change the dress and the dungarees, or... You could. And any little... Um, you could embroider something on the dungarees, personalise them. or an initial, or anything like that. If any of you have made any Tilda toys, I know we have a lot of the, um, like, the elephant. And yeah. what are the other ones we've had in a bag? A bet, um... Monkey. A monkey. The, the long monkey. I, I automatically went like this, like I was going to do a monkey impression. The, um, the monkey with the really long arms that we were hanging off from the shelves. If you've made any of those, send them to our um, email address, studio at sewingquarter.com. We'll show some on the show in this hour. Just make sure the fabric's not folded over. I don't want to catch any more into the seam. So you are doing this with it folded, doubled over? Doubled over so that I'm joining... Oh, I can't because the fold's there. But I'm, I'm joining front and back of the giraffe. In one go? In one go. That's a sneaky trick. It is. It's, it's an, I, I've never made anything this way before. It was only starting making Tilda toys. And in the tight corners, just take it nice and easy. And keep to the line as much as possible. So this colourway is using the uh, sort of sunshine uh, cross-hatched linear fabric for the main body of the giraffe. And then it's paired with a corally, a really bright sort of lobster coral and also a soft blue. So you can use that for your, for the clothes, whether you want, whatever, you know, combination you want to use that for the dress or the dungarees. ZTGC44. We've, it's all about sunshine today. We just had sunshine cave and now we've got the sunshine linear giraffe bundle. Uh, is it one giraffe you would probably get out of this metre and a half of fabric? I know you hate that question, sorry. I don't, I'm just terrible <laughs> at estimating. Um, I think so. You could... No, I would, I'd, I'd stick with one. I think one. one. Yes. Because I've done a few limbs out of this fabric, but I haven't actually made a complete giraffe out of this fabric. OK. Which one's the most popular at the moment? Which colourway for our giraffe? Let's find out. Oh, it's the stone, which is this classic one we've got here in our very traditional Tilda colours. It's quite nice to be told exactly where to sew as well. And to not feel responsible, you can just, you know... There we go. I swear this pen like doesn't leave your hand. No, it doesn't. This is all. This is your like go-to. Is this what you have in your handbag? You know, most people have yeah. a biro. Jo has a water erasable pen just in her handbag. I have two in my sewing kit. One in my handbag and one in a pen pot next <laughs> to my machine as well. So I'm just doing the little sections either side. And you leave that bottom section out that you said is going to be to create the, the boxed uh, bottom part. Yes, there's an opening in the bottom bottom to turn. The giraffe the right way out. It's got a double bottom. Bottom bottom, yeah. <laughs> and then the box bottomy sides. So here we go. So I've stitched around, tiny little bit there, all the way around, stopping here for the dart at the top. And the, I'll do that. Whilst I'm sewing on the lines, I'll do the limb as well. And you need to do two legs and two arms. They are different sizes. Um, I have some ready made ones. So these are the. Shall I show those? These are our arms and legs. So Joe's just going to make one of those now. <laughs> They're like carrots, aren't they? <laughs> In that yeah. fabric. They do look a bit, if we put some green on the top, that way round. <laughs> so these are our arms and legs. So actually, like the bear you did earlier this morning where the legs were stuffed separately to the main body, it does yeah. make it hang differently, doesn't it? Rather than it feeling a very rigid sort of stuffing all the way through. It keeps it, it's looser at the top and then it has more sort of bounce to it, actually. Yes. 
bit more flexibility. I mean, the, the amount of flexibility you get in the limbs is how you stitch them on. If you stab stitch them to the side of the body, you'll get a bit, a bit of movement. I did it then with my arm, not very convincingly. <laughs> stab stitch. Just following the lines. This is a leg, isn't it? Yeah. This is, I, yes, this is a leg, this one. And with this one, you're leaving the, uh, the bottom again. The dark the open dart here. The but we will close that in a minute because if you transfer from the pattern, there is a little mark. Um, this will be opened up later and used to turn the leg the right way out. So we end up with an opening here. Oh, right. Okay. So I'll close this in a minute. Like I, like, hole, it it? Is. Yeah. I like to cut these out with pinking shears. So you're now adding, sort of cutting out, leaving a seam allowance. Also saves you clipping, does it? Because it it's does a kind lot of, of sort of doing it for you. It is sort of pre-notched when it's been cut with pinking shears. So two of these and then exactly the same technique for two of the cut the dart in a minute um, for the arms right and okay. the horns are done in the same way as well so all of these at the beginning if you double your fabric over and sew it like this it's actually quite quick isn't it to do it the... is it's not an awful lot of machine sewing it's quite it's hand finishing really but that's how you get the personality in and it's the hand finishing details that make Yours, yours, if that makes sense. I love the, these tilde ones that they always have a little bit of like a rosy cheek. I, I do. don't know if you can see here. You can just use blusher, can't you? Regular, yes, that, regular blusher. I'm wearing the same as the giraffe right now. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and the giraffe share a makeup bag. But you can just see, it just gives it that little, that, those little rosy cheeks. It's that sort of detail that is really thought about with Tilda. We were looking this morning as well, actually. I don't know if I can I save it. At the, um, at the hair that they use on some of the angels, and we're going to see if we can maybe get some to do some of these angels that are in the book. In the book, there are loads of designs. We, we did have the elephant. Um, this is the... Let me find an angel to show you. But these are iconic Tilda as well. You'll see these in all the books. Sort of dotted about as well in even some of their homeware and in some of their... Um, you can just see this sort of... detail. Oh, a stock warning on this. Please do check out the book. You need to check out your baskets. We've got limited stock on this now. TCSP87. But loads of projects in here. Beautiful photography. 50 projects in this book. You can see bags and... Sort of storage baskets in different fabrics and there's some nice little slippers in here. I have my eye on the slippers. <laughs> Lots of inspiration. A lovely coffee table book. That's a funny shaped hat. I have to be honest, I'm not sure I would wear that hat. Would you wear that, Jo? I'd try it on. I'd give it a go. It's that was very slightly, uh, slightly pixie it's quite sort unusual, of feel it? to it. But there's loads of, lo there's, oh, there's a nice laptop case here and belts and different things. But yeah, over 50 projects in this book and limited stock. So please do check out your baskets if you've got this one and you do want to buy that. All of the instructions for the giraffe, but also the elephant. Lots of the Tilda angels are in here. They've got a summer and spring one. And at the back, you've got all of your, let me just flick through. All of your patterns. And your templates too. Pages and pages of templates there. I think we can guess what that one is. There's the elephant template. So Joe is currently cutting out, cutting these out. So you've done the same with the body that you did with the pinking shears, just cut all the way around. Yes. Um, two legs, two arms, two horns. I've done. There's. It's done in the same way. And the ear, so that you get a contrast fabric on the front of the ear, okay. instead of folding the fabric over. I mean, if you wanted it the same fabric front and back, you'd just do them in the same way here. But I've put 
the contrast fabric right sides together and drawn around the ear. Now, the seam allowances aren't included in the pattern apart from here, and they're marked with dotted lines. So when I cut this out, I will leave a seam allowance around the side, but I'll cut to that line. Otherwise, the ears would be very long. So, let's see. There, you want an oh, ear sort okay, of that yeah. size when it's done. So I'll make a quick ear. Um, there are two ways, because there's a little bit of filling in the ears. You can either make them and then add a little bit of stuffing or a little bit of wadding, or you can put them, the fabric then on top of some wadding and sew around it and then oh, it's already right. attached. It's already in there. So Again, whichever that, method. from a sensory point of view as well, it does give it then a slightly different feel to the stuffing, doesn't it? It does. Like we were saying, if you wanted to add um, on the foot of the bare area, perhaps if you wanted to add like a fleece or something, just to give a, different, a slightly different feel to touch, it, the same if you wanted to use some wadding. So for that one, I just added a little bit of filling. But I often make ears like this on top of a piece of wadding so that they're evenly, evenly and ready stuffed. So I've got that seam allowance already added on the bottom, so I'll just sort of cut You can be that. a bit closer, go a bit closer to the line. And then leave the seam allowance around the side. And if there's a sharp turn, which there is in this one, let's get rid of those. I will clip a little bit into the seam allowance, just at the tip there. And there's another tip in the pattern. Because the giraffe's neck is quite firmly stuffed, you might want to oversew these lines just to add that extra bit of reinforcement. By oversew, you mean you would just sew that just again? Go back over this section, yeah, just so you've got that double thickness of stitching to hold the stuffing and to. But it depends how how you stuff really. If you want it lightly stuffed, because it would still hold. It's that one's not very firmly stuffed. No. Not like, for a Joe toy. Not most, a, most of Joe's toys are like rigid. So you said your, your um, son said that it's like a stone, didn't he? <laughs> it's like these are really solid, like stones. I it do make an depend. effort to not add as much <laughs> stuffing. I have to. I have to go back and take some out. So there we go, and then just tuck the seam allowance in and seal that shut. So I've got one ear ready done. I've just hand stitched across the bottom. Which stitch did you use to just sew that in, did you say? I just use a ladder stitch. I use a ladder stitch pretty much all the time. It's with, um, especially with toy making. So the horn, same. Clip a little bit around the top. I've got some ready-made here. But again, cut, there's the seam allowance because it's tucked in, so you can cut to that line. Okay. So there's some horns. Right, and now, I want to tackle the darts. So there's a dart at the top of the head, just gives it that little bit of, it's here. It also tells you where to put the ears, which is quite helpful, but just gives a bit of, bit of width to the head. Looks like a little mushroom. Just in those fabrics, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it does. Now I've, I've made a few, and when you, do, when you tackle the darts like this, I've made a few where I've experimented opening the seams or sending one one way, one the other. And I've decided now the easiest way to do it is put one one way, one the other, and pull it as straight as you can so that the seam... Because if this seam allowance gets caught, it will pull... When it's turned the right way, it will pull the fabric slightly out of position and give it a little bit of a pucker at the top. So, And also, because you can follow the line to sew it because it's drawn on this side. So you can always transfer the markings to give you a rough idea on this side as well. So you pull it out and then you flatten it away? So the way I find, line the seams up, seam allowances going in opposite directions, and then just pull it as straight as you can. Almost underneath. So that the seam allowances, but experiment, find which way you find comfortable. You might want to open the seams up to do it. Okay. But they can, the, the seam allowance inside can get caught and sort of pull it a bit out of shape. Oh, we've had some pictures sent in. Let's have a look. Who are these from? Wow! We've had loads of pictures sent in of Tilda animals. Look at all of these. Oh, we've got monkeys and we've got all oh, the rabbits, lovely, and the elephants. So thank you so much. We've had pictures from Dorothy, Liz, La Laureen, Nikki, Sandra, Beth. 
and Lynn, thank you so much for sending all of those pictures in. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love the geese as well. Look at those. I've made oh, a goose. the elephant. So. I remember we did that. It has the ruffle on the neck, doesn't it? it? Does. And it's got that cute little, um, like a party hat on an elastic. I remember doing that on with you. They are so, so lovely. And they just look and in different fabrics as well, in different colourways and in different outfits. They, look, yes. they all look different. I mean, the outfits, I don't know. I mean, I love the toys anyway, but the outfits really make them. Yeah, they do. Just makes them really... Ca and just, I think, even just sitting on a shelf in a children's room or in a nursery or... It's just lovely. Yes. We, need, it, we could have a whole, like, zoo of animals. <laughs> and trying to explain what I was talking to you about a bit more, if the seam allowance moves up and you catch more of it into that seam, you will get a bit of puckering at the top, a bit of gathering. So pull it out there and it's got more freedom then to keep this seam in line. So I've done the top one, I'll do the bottom ones. These are straight, so you don't have to pull them straight because they are anyway. So these are just boxed at the bottom. These are quite easy. It does seem strange to have not left anywhere to put the arms and legs because you're going to attach them afterwards. Yes. So the colourway that Joe's working with is the sunshine linear. That, as I said, that comes with um, a coral. I'll just show you, Sorry, Joe. The, um, these two fabrics. So you can see the colours. So this is the sort of the combination here with your spot on blue, which is actually folded in the other way. It's that bright blue there. And then you've got the um, bright corally pink and the linear sunshine. But if you like the one that's already made up, which is this one, this is our stone giraffe. So um, the actual body of the giraffe is made in the stone spot on. And then it's a pastel pink and a lime green for the dungarees or for the dress. This is the most popular one. It comes with all of your stuffing, your thread and your skein as well. KK GC 69. A fairly traditional giraffe there. We have also got a couple of other colour options, um, which we will show you, but we've got a green a, and one that's got green and red and it's got a slightly darker for the body. And um, rather than a stone, it's more of a, a golden um, sort of tan colour. Let's have a look with that one here. This is the sand bundle. RJGC88. And the last one is two linear look fabrics. So the dress or dungarees would be made out of um, probably the blue and the pink you can see there. It's a dusty pink. And then you've got the duck egg blue spot on. So this is the cream giraffe, KXGC11. This is the most, second most popular one after the stone, 2045. So Joe, you were boxing the bottom. So oh, sorry, the I moved your fabric. Giraffe. Today. Body is done, so I can turn that out in a moment. I'll do a clip a bit around these corners. But then it's the dart in the bottom of the leg and there's the, sa they're the same in the arm. So bring these together. And as you can see, it's not a straight line. That side's a bit better. It's a curve, but pull it as straight as you can to sew it so that these seams, the seam allowance doesn't get caught in the stitching because again, it will alter the finished look. So I'm going to bring those together seam either side but keep that as straight as possible to go straight across where that line is yes. yeah so. and i've drawn it on the other side again with the water erasable pen so that i've got a line to follow on both sides instead of just one rather than making it too hard for yourself you so, <laughs> just might as well just mark it so the needle's in and i'm just pulling that straight as possible to go straight across These pens that Joe uses all the time, this is a water erasable pen, and we do sell these at St. Cord. I don't know if we'll get a graphic up for that, but if you do want to use one of these, you can obviously just mark straight onto the fabric. You don't have to worry about it marking. You even draw on the right side of the fabric, don't you? I do, and it sponges away. I mean, always test it on the fabric if you're concerned, but I've never had a problem with these. That's no. always come off. 2.45, that's on your screen at the moment. So this is a leg done, but it's completely sealed now, so I need to go carefully pull away the fabric on this side because I don't want to snip through that. Put that in half. I'm just going to make a little snip into it and then pop the scissors in. It's quite a small gap to put the stuffing in through, isn't it? It takes a while. You have, to, you have small little fingers. To... <laughs> I used... I always, I always give away my 
It's, it's not glamorous, my sewing. Come on, tell us what your <laughs> um, glamorous tip was going to be. It's like a Chinese noodle stick or something. I had um, a plastic teaspoon to hand, so I used the handle of a plastic teaspoon. Oh, it did <laughs> the job? These. It worked really well. You can put it on the spoon and then just <laughs> feed it in. There we go. And the seam's nice and even at the bottom. It's not gathered at all because we pulled it straight. We've got a nice shape to them, though, haven't they? It's almost they like a, a bit of a, a diamond there. I don't know if you can see the base of the... This is what has been created by pulling it out and doing that flat. And that's what you mean about keep pulling it really flat. It yes. gives you that shape at the bottom. So you get a nice flat foot. Because if any seam allowance is caught in, it will pull bits internally. It will pull them out of shape so you won't get a nice smooth finish. To slightly distort it. It will. Yeah. Distort, okay. that's the word. <laughs> so I'm just going to snip a little bit into the internal curve there. And I'll just take a couple of extra notches out here. If everybody checks out their basket on the book, we will have sold out of that one this morning. So it's the Tilda Studio book. There's over 50 projects in there, all of your instructions for the giraffe. And well done if you did manage to get one. Good work. And then head first. Push the head through the right way. And then down the neck. And out we left the opening in the bottom. Ah, uh, yes, I remember now. There we go. It's like a sock. It is. <laughs> I might need, is that right? There it is. Just pop that in to shape the snout. There we go, there's the body. So I'll stuff that now. I've got, I've got the limbs ready to go. And the limbs, you need to, once they're stuffed, you need to close the opening. You said with the ladder stitch, you always tend to use, use for those. Stitch. And this won't be seen because this is the side that joins to the body. So this is just going to be almost like an internal, where it's just going to be hidden, isn't it? So we have the opening here, and I'll just go either side, make a stitch, and they form sort of rungs to a ladder. Go back to the other side, make a stitch. Oh, that's why it's called a ladder stitch. That's why it's called ladder stitch. Oh. And it's great because it's, <laughs> it's, it's an invisible stitch. And then as I get to the top of the opening, I'll just sort of bring the stitches close together. As I get to the top. And then just push the edges in just so they don't come out. Gather it up. And there's... Keeps it nice and tight and secure. Yes. We've had another picture in. This one was from Anne. This is her first ever Tilda toy. Thanks, Anne. Let's have a look at this. Here we go. It's one with the hair. It's an, an angel. And it's, oh. oh, I spot a few of our things that we've got that little mini iron I can see behind you there. <laughs> that was your first ever toy as well. That's perfect. And the jacket as well. Isn't it? Really snazzy. That's great, Anne. Thank you so much for sending that in. I do love the, I love the wardrobe outfit. That one's got, sort of got long boots on as well. It's a glamorous it's angel. It's very stylish. A stylish, yeah. a stylish one. Right, so I'll stuff the body really quickly. I won't do properly but then you get the idea with the how things are added on and sort of it comes to life you're doing quite well for time we've still got we? sort of 20 minutes so i might get to the dungarees at this oh. at this rate it's stuffing for me takes quite a lot of time and i just carefully gently just push it push it right into the seams just so you get those shapes are the dungarees hard would you say no no they're not too tricky. Again, it's hand finishing. So once you've made them, um, I don't know whether it shows on there, they're fitted then. So I add, I've added a tuck. I they're made on. that sound like that was my idea. You, yeah. you, it does say in the pattern. So add a tuck either side on the front and the back, just so they're shaped at the waist. Um, so they fit oh, here, perfectly. Yeah. Here, you mean? Just this bit here. Yeah, yes. those little bits in there. And then the pockets. And they just cross over again at the back. The book has sold out, so we haven't got any more of those in stock. We will try and get that back in stock for you, but well done if you did manage to get one. Got your eye on the giraffe. Or maybe the angels or the elephant or all those other projects. 
There are so many nice projects. In that That's book. a really big Tilda book, actually, because we have a lot of Tilda books on the show, and this one's got loads and loads of projects in. But all of these different fabric bundles you could use as well. The, the, you get a metre and a half of fabric in total, so you don't have to use it, you know, for the giraffe. You could use it for one of the other, the other toys, the elephants, or... Um, all the angels, as I said, like Anne sent in. That was that they called the, Tilda called them angels, and you spot them in all their books and on all of their sort of shelves and sitting on their front covers. And look, you can see them there, sitting on the chair. There's even a little one on the spine. Oh, is there? Yeah. Let me have a turn. You can just see one there, tiny one. <laughs> but that one's gone, so I will pop that there. Remember as well, if you haven't bought anything from Sewing Quarter before, if it's your first time buying anything, and for today only, if you spend over £10, we will send you an eight-piece Fat Quarter bundle. So that's a gift from us to you. That's an exclusive offer for today. Um, it's only been on for, well, it's been on for the last two days, but it's the last day today, only until midnight. So if you're a new customer, welcome to Sewing Quarter. If you buy something, one of these uh, giraffe kits this morning, or if you spend over £10, we'll send you one of those. So this is where, like you said, if you had re-stitched the neck, just to give it that... What just, did you call it? Overstitch? No. Yes, just stitch... Oh, I don't know if there's a technical name for it. Just stitch over the, the original over stitching, the original just stitching to reinforce again, Just it. to give it a bit more strength. There you go. You do you get that lovely shape. And then each of these sort of parts is sealed, apart from the horns. You can sew those on directly without closing the bottom because you want them... You want them round at the bottom rather yeah. than sewing across them and flattening them off. See, at this stage, this could be a few things, couldn't it? Like, it could be a swan. That could be, like, the beak of a... It could be... It looked a bit like a dinosaur at one point. It's, the, it's only when you start to put everything into place. Oh, it could be. It could be a dinosaur, couldn't it? It, it could. Brachiosaurus. Are they... They're long-necked, aren't they? Oh, I don't know. I have boys. So oh, see. Yeah. My dinosaur knowledge is not great, it but... but... It has expanded as a result has. of... I actually toured with a show for five months that was about dinosaurs, and I still don't know that much about them. <laughs> <laughs> I went to theatres all over the country with these massive dinosaurs, and I still don't really know a huge amount about... about them. Well, I'm never quite sure, especially if you read them in the book, whether I've got the pronunciation right. But it's and... amazing, because you meet children as well, and they, they know, like, they really do. They do. They take it, or they know the technical names, what, you know, what they, the differences between them, like you said, oh, is that the one with the long neck, or... It's got a bit of, sort of, the Loch Ness Monster about it as well, as if it's <laughs> rising up through. If we had water here, like, yeah. let's see. This is going to turn into this, this giraffe. Let's see him there. It's the ears and horns that really give it the character, don't they, that sort of... So we're still open at the bottom at the moment, just where Joe's finished stuffing that. And that's done then. This would be the point where you close that with okay, ladder stitch. So still or... that I'm just going to tuck the seam allowance in at the bottom of the horn. Were these stuffed at all? Yes, I'm going to yeah. pop a little bit of stuffing in. Just minimal. Oh yeah, they are quite. Oh, they are quite solidly stuffed, aren't they? They are when I've done it. No, but I think that's what I think for the horns. They, that's, um, well, they do. So they stand up. You really want them to... Because that's what gives it the giraffe character. But also, there's not an awful lot... There's, I mean, the seam allowance fills them up quite a bit inside. So you, you can't put too much stuffing in. Do you just have a stash of stuffing? Oh, it's everywhere. Everywhere, just... Absolutely. If you run out of cotton wool, you're just using stuffing instead to, like, cleanse your face. <laughs> There will just be, it's like tumbleweed, suddenly some blows across the dining room floor. Where's just turn, yeah, from? where's that? So once you've popped stuffing in the horns, I would start with the ears. Although maybe you could put the horns on first. I mean, whichever your preference. I like to pop the ears on first. Now with the ears, they're shaped, so you've got that sort of tuck in the middle. Yeah. Now, I, and they start where the dart finishes. That's pretty much where the top of the ear. So that's quite handy for placement. Start sewing the ear on at the end of this shaping dart in the head. Now, I, when I stitched those, I started stitching and I shaped it round. But actually, it's probably easier. I've got enough thread on here. Get some more. Is that quite hard to do that now? That's stuffed. 
the ear. Yeah. It's not too difficult. It's. Use a bit I'm of. Just imagine in stitching into that. But you fold it as you go. Folding you go. as you go, I think, is. I uh, put it this way. I wished I hadn't done it that way once I started. What folding as you go? Folding as I, I because it's difficult to get the other one to match up and. This yes. is what they look like when they're done. Just to get, it gives you that sort of curvy, sort of more realistic ear shape. This is the stone spot on as well in this combination. The most popular giraffe this morning. And it comes with pink and also the green you can see in the dungarees. So you're not going to do it as you go? No, I'm going to... I've tucked it in, sealed the ear, tucked the seam allowance in, ladder stitch across the end. And then I would fold it. And when you're happy with how the ear finished ear would look, pop a couple of stitches in just to hold those in place and so you can stitch, stitch it on, on in a straight line almost. Yeah. You don't have to bend it round to create those. So you're bending and shaping it first and then first. attaching it. Yeah. That I just think, and, and then you can look at them both and make sure they're the same, same sort of, you know, same depth of fold, one's not narrower than the other. Was that one of those where you started it and thought, what have this I done is, to myself here? Yes, That's... this is not the easiest way of doing it. So just pop a few stitches in there. I mean, I'm doing this quite hastily. There you go, breaking the thread. Um, so the ear is in the shape, the finished shape, before you start. So it's going to be like this. Okay. And then match up the end to the end of the dart and sew that in place. And it really, once it's got ears, it really takes shape. Stitch that ear on, do the same on the other side. And the horns, position them, once you've got the ears on, I think it's probably easiest. One on either side. How Let's do you do the horns? Could you just show us how, show how yeah. I did it? Just to attach it to the, how you attached it. It's the ears it's and horns that all of a sudden, this isn't a Loch Ness Monster anymore, it's not, or a beak of a swan, or it does, it, that's where you're really getting the giraffe character. Okay, I'll do this quickly. Um, yes, you want them, the, the base to be in a circle, so sort of sewing around the bottom. I just imagine this might be quite tricky. I wonder if anyone else would want to see how you attach that. Giraffe name, I'm thinking Geraldine. Geraldine's name. Geraldine the giraffe. Good, strong giraffe name. Yeah, that's quite a strong giraffe name, isn't it? Or, um, or Gerald, obviously, for yes. a boy. Um, Jeff. Jeff. Gertrude from producer Paul. That's a, that's a, a strong choice. Gertrude, Geraldine. I'm really terrible at naming things. Gilbert. Gilbert. Gertie. Graham. I'm not sure about Graham for a giraffe. I think the longer names work really well. Maybe because it's the long neck, long name. It's just sort of tying in really well. <laughs> Jerome, maybe. Jerome. Jerome, Jerome the giraffe. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I can't pick the needle up now. There we go, I'll pick it up by the thread. Right, so position the horn in place. And you can just, because it's only small, I mean, you could pin it if you wanted, but I would just secure the thread. I'll try and do this so it's visible, tuck that. Pop that in a bit further so it's... Even if we just start it off just so we can see, because I just... I wouldn't have known how to do that part. So I'll just pick a stitch... ..on there... ..and do the equivalent... ..underneath. So just sort of slip stitch or ladder stitch. I've just been told about 20 names beginning with a G in my ear. I think producer Paul might have gone on a search engine <laughs> and Googled names beginning with G. We've got Gwendolyn. We've got, what else have you just said? George. Gretchen. Gertrude. I did say Gertrude. <laughs> Gordon. Gareth. George. We get the idea. Grenville? Have <laughs> heard of Grenville? No. I quite like that. I can imagine that in maybe like a gingham dungaree yeah. or dress. Like a farmer giraffe. So it's pretty much ladder stitch again, really. So I'd take a stitch from the head and then above, and they do sort of form the same sort of ladder rungs. Mm. 
We've got about 10 minutes, so I did just want to, I know okay, just I'll to show start, that one, I'll but if you there. do want to do the dungarees, I know tight. you're keen. I mean, if you want them firmly held, just go around on a, a second time, just yeah. to make sure they're really securely in place. So should I stop there? So legs, position the legs, so those on, got some arms. Um, I in e initially was going to stitch the arms up there just and then realised, sorry, that out <laughs> of the way. And then I was stitching them and then realised it needed a long neck. So slip, move them down yeah, the body. Yeah, of course, because naturally you would go, oh, this is the body, but yeah. you need, yeah. And then you just attach those again with a ladder stitch. Yes. OK. Well, stab stitched through. With the arms, I went straight through with a good long needle and long thread. Oh, right. I went straight through from one to the other so that there was a little bit of flex and movement yeah. in the arms. And then the same with the legs. Same with the legs, yes. But you do need a long needle because you're going through quite a... Quite a, a and don't pull it too tight, otherwise it'll, it'll pull in. You don't so in terms to... of the order, it doesn't matter with the horns, the ears, the arms, legs? No, you can sew. You can do uh, any... Get any... all your giraffe body parts there and sit down with a film and... Because I, 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 I did, I watched a film and assembled a giraffe. Was it a, a safari-related film? It wasn't, very few. <laughs> <laughs> very few safari animals. <laughs> Right, I'll move on to the dungarees. dungarees. I think I stole some of your fabric earlier to show people what colours were in that other co colourway. So this is the, um, in the golden sunshine bundle, you get a blue spot on and you get a coral as well, which we're going to make the dungarees out of now. So you've got the templates from the book. I have. I drew them out and I didn't need to, force of habit made me turn it over, but actually because you've got the two pieces, you'll have the mirror image underneath. Um, so you, don't, you could do them both the same way. Does that make sense? I'm not sure. Maybe do that one, say that one again. Maybe that might just be my brain. This, because when you're cutting out, you need four of this piece. Yeah. And when they're not symmetrical, you need mirror images. So two one way, so I'd draw two out one. If I was going through a single fabric, two out one way and turn it over and do the other way. So I'd have two... Of each Two way. of each, if that yeah. makes sense. And here, because when you cut them out, you do, you're automatically doing the mirror image one because we're doing two layers and they're right sides together. Oh, so, so it's So on this done. side, it will be... On this side, it's that way. So plain side up. But on this side, it will be that way. Because it's right sides together with the fabric yes. folded. I'm with you. I'm with I you. might have overcomplicated that when it... No, no, not at all. Not, that was just my brain catching up. <laughs> and to start the dungarees, so along this seam, so this central seam. So I'll do that... Join both of those and, I'll and then I'll trim them out. OK, so we're following that same technique that we did with the body of the giraffe. Basically. Once I start with that technique, I like to uh, follow it through. I do. So we're going for blue for the main body of the dungarees and then the straps and the pockets are going to be in that pink. So actually, if you've got half a metre of pink, of the coral, sorry, you're going to have a lot left over. You will. And of the blue, actually, because these are the dungarees. You could make the dress and the dungarees, I guess, if you wanted to, but you say you fit it to the body, don't you? So they're not sort of changeable. I mean, if you, if you fitted them, if, they, if you made them a looser fit, you could make them You could changeable. put little poppers on them. You could. If you wanted to. But, yes, yeah, so you're only going to use the um, green and pink or the blue and coral for, for those dungarees. They also have a lot of fabric left over from half a metre. In fact, I mean... A, yeah, I mean, you have a, a really sizable piece of fabric. There we go. So I'll trim these out. I mean, you could make them where you cut, you cut the pieces out and then stitch them together, but while they're like this, I tend to keep the same technique. So you've only stitched down one side, the main curve? Yes. OK. And then we'll place... So this will form the front of the dungarees and the back of the dungarees. And we only need to put the pockets and the bib section on one side. And this has the seam allowance included, so... Trim across there. And you always go for pink and shears just because it saves you having to clip in. Yes, I quite like pink and shears for clothing as well. Because it moves about, it sort of limits the fraying. And because I have the lines... When I sew toys, I like a straight edge to work from so that I'm consistent with my seam allowance. And I find it really difficult to take a consistent seam allowance from a non-straight edge, if that makes yeah. sense. Because I'm never quite sure whether to use the guide on the foot against the tips of the... or, you know, the, the inside point or the outside point. Or the point. outer... Cut, yeah, so we have the little triangle point. I'll cut that all the way around, I have. 
So that is a complete front section of the dungarees. Yes, so that's going to be where your legs... So I'll leave the second one there. now. So we, how are we for time? Uh, about five minutes. I've cut the pockets out and I've pre-pressed them. So just pressing the seam allowance all the way around. You see, I've got the lines. This is like the advent calendar yesterday. It is. I'm getting deja vu. So I'm just going to sew across the top just to hold that down along the top of the pocket. But then the sides will be held down when they're stitched in place. You could mix and match these dungarees with different coloured giraffes. I could, you could you have, could. couldn't you have, if you made a couple? And you could have the dungarees however you want, just one pocket or two pockets. You could put a pocket on the back if you wanted to. You could even, I think what would look nice, even a little extra patch, almost like this, to blue. worn out dungarees. Or even like a, a tiny little button would be quite cute, wouldn't it? It would. On the um, strap, just here. You need to be, if you give them to a child, the, there's a yeah, button that's issue. Yeah, that's but, very true. Sorry. I, I, no, no, Always a safety, so. sorry. No, that's, that's a good point. So I'll just stitch that quickly into place. Does it make you wary in other projects? Do you still find that you're programmed to like using extra like notions or haberdashery, things like buttons, because you do a lot of toys yes. and with that safety element for children, does it make you, does it steer you more towards like a zip instead of say buttons? It does really. But also there's a real difference between, because I used to design for factory production and a button, the, it cost money to have a button hand sewn onto something so it was always Velcro, because you would oh, machine it's sew it on. It's safe, but also there's that machine sewing aspect to it as well. And that's the nice thing about designing patterns that people are going to make and, and want to spend time over. You can add all those extra details and flourishes that you would... That was really nice going from factory production, because it was always, is this cheap? Is this quick and is it cheap? It's, yeah. And, Whereas but, you can actually go creatively, what do I want to do and what, 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 what looks, looks better? Best and, yes. So it's a really nice way of doing it. So I'll pop... A little pocket on. You can just see there. So I actually quite like it, like you said, with one pocket. You could even do little patches, couldn't you? All you the could. way, like you, if you wanted to, and stitch that, hand stitch those on. I'll approach the bib bit just because it's quicker and easier. Again, I'm going to draw around. Have I lost? Oh, pets over there. Sorry, <laughs> throwing them about. Just this top bit we're doing now, where you're going to attach the straps to this bib part. And you could do this in a different colour. You could add a little bit of embroidery, maybe a flower embroidery in the centre would look cute. So this is the bottom edge here. So I'll just mark that so I don't get confused. So around the outer edges. Do you sew around all the edges of the bib? Leaving the bottom one yep. open, yes. But go straight round. This would be a lovely Christmas gift if you are starting to already think about, you know, those sorts of things. I know we are here at Sewing. We had a Christmas day yesterday, if you missed us. I had antlers on all day from 8 till 12 yesterday. Um, but it does start you thinking about, you know... Is it Boxing Day, then? Today? Is it? Yeah, it effectively, has... it's Boxing Day. Really, we should be having, like, turkey and stuffing sandwiches we should, today. We should. <laughs> <laughs> and leftover mince pies. Right, the seam allowance is included along the bottom, so I'll cut to the line on the bottom. So always when the seam allowance is included, you cut right up to that line. Where it isn't, okay. you cut away, obviously you're allowing a bit more. I mean, if you wanted a deeper seam allowance, you could add a bit extra, but it's enough really for this. Okey doke. So I'll just snip the corners so that they turn. And you could top stitch around the edge of this if you wanted to. Add some more detail. We've got a minute or so, so we'll just have to maybe right talk on. through this last part. So baste that, open the seams up, give these a press, open the seams up, baste that, sew that onto there, and then this, when the dungarees, you need it centred, that's what I should have said, make sure it's centred so your seam falls in the centre of the bib. Yeah. Because otherwise it, it would be noticeable, I think. Stitch that on. Not baste it, actually, because these stitches need to hold it in place. And then we've got the pockets. And then join 
same piece on top because we've got an equivalent piece like this. For the back so of along the, the sides and then fold up the, the edge so you can see along the bottom in one smooth go. Here. Oh, yeah. You can just see. And then finally, right sides together, you'd need to sew around this opening here just to close the dungarees. Here. And then just the straps. The straps, and it gives you the finished size for the straps. The finished size unfolded, I think. So you, you need to, the measurements it gives you, you still need to add a seam allowance, top and bottom. And I've been caught out like that before. And so you want this finished, it will give you the finished size as well. You want the, that sort of width for the straps. And cross them over at the back. Stitch them on the front, stitch them on at the back, and add your tucks at the side to shape your dungarees to fit. Around the body. Around the just dress. Just in here. There he is. I'm going to take him with me. OK, thanks, Joe. Oh, thank you very much. much. Thank you so much for our Geraldine. We've had, had fun with her this morning. <laughs> Let's take him, take her with me. <laughs> so the most popular one this morning in that giraffe has been the stone one, which is in this um, sort of soft beige colour. This is lovely for a young child or for, or for anyone, in fact, but um, with your greens and your yellows there. This one's still in the lead. KKGC69. Please do check out your basket on that one. We're very limited on stock now. If you do want that one for today, it's the first time we've had the giraffe on the show. Our next one is, next in the lead, is the cream. So this one here has been paired with a, a duck egg blue spot on and a really lovely dusty pink, which has got that linear look. You can just see those there. Again, with your thread your stuffing and your skein for your face. KXGC11. That's the second most popular this morning. The main body of the giraffe in that would be lovely, actually. It's rather than the spot, it's got those sort of lines built into it. The next one is the one that we've been working with. So this is the sunshine giraffe. So you've seen this one a lot this morning. Just looking at those dungarees there in the coral and the blue spot on. And then they, obviously you can mix and match if you want. You've got enough fabric here to do it the other way around. If you wanted to do the giraffe in the coral or the blue, then you could. And you've got the sunshine crosshatch, which we use for the body, probably just because it's slightly more traditional giraffe colour. But obviously you can play around with those, coordinate them however you wish. ZT GC44. One last option. This one here, I believe, is sand. So you've got a golden spot on. You've got a cross hatch with your green and you've got a red spot on as well. Again, with your threads. A nice mushroom colour thread there, actually. All of those are 100 metres. And this big bag of stuffing you can see on the table, that also comes with it. RJGC88 is your final giraffe option. If you want to make this lovely little giraffe that's been with me in this last hour with Joe. So I'm actually back in tomorrow. Let's have a look at the menu of what's coming up on today's show. Jo is back joining me again in the morning. So she's here. I don't know if she's here at eight or nine. Let's have a look at the menu of what's coming up. So at eight o'clock, hearts, hugs and kisses. That sounds like fun. That sounds lovely. Uh, who's that with? Is that with, is that with Jo? And then at nine o'clock, we've got Cave... Um, oh, 9am Cave Stripes Galore Quilt. That's with Jo. 10 a.m. Oh, we've got Joy in tomorrow. I've never had a show with Joy. I'm looking forward to that. Jo Joy's World of Wadding, showing you what to do with those. And 11 a.m., back to school. So Jo is back in, getting back into that September mindset for Easy Like Sunday Morning. We need some backing music with that. There's definitely a song that goes with that, I think. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you've managed to get anything, thank you for joining in and getting involved with Sewing Quarter. We've been overwhelmed with photos this morning and it's lovely for us to see the projects you've been up to, those lovely Tilda animals and your cave inspired projects. So thank you for sharing those. Now, as I said, I'm back in in the morning. I hope you have a lovely Saturday afternoon. Maybe the sun will shine, who knows? If not, we've got sunshine cave and sunshine fabric to keep you happy. So have a lovely Saturday and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Join us for a three-day quilting fiesta with the incredibly talented Joy Edgington. From Sunday the 27th of August to Tuesday the 29th, Joy will be sharing all her quilting expertise and tips with us. On Sunday the 27th, we will be delving into Joy's world of wadding, learning how to select the correct wadding for the right job and demystifying the properties of them all. Then on Monday the 28th, Joy will be presenting the Elna 730 Pro Quilting Machine. 
This machine has a fantastic array of functions enabling you to create effortless quilting and sewing projects. With over 170 different stitches and an abundance of complementary accessories, the possibilities are endless. Finally, on Tuesday the 29th, Joy will be teaching us how to jazz up quilt borders with the flying geese border method and showing us how to create the Arkansas crossroad blocks. So make sure you tune in on the 27th, 28th and 29th of August for an insight into Joy's world of quilting. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78.